I will call our Blackstone Mobile Regional School Committee meeting for August 31st to order. If we could stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will start with introduction of members. Mobile, Millville. Carrie Godet, Blackstone. Dan Keith, Blackstone. Erin Vinaco, Millville. Tara Lachlan, Millville. Tara Scobie, Blackstone. Chuck Tunton, Blackstone. Denise Carrier, Director of Finance and Operations. Jill Pillagallarani, Assistant Superintendent, Director of Student Services. And Jason DeFalco, Superintendent. Thank you so much. And I'm looking for a motion for consent agenda A, warrants and minutes of our July 27th meeting. So moved. Motion made by Dan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ted. Any discussion on warrants or minutes of July 27th? All those in favor of consent agenda A, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Um, and I'm actually going to look to take our agenda out of order if the committee agrees and move um, to the report of the superintendent. Um, I think we should take all of the sections just because we do have a lot of guests here tonight for report of the superintendent. Anyone opposed to that movement? And then we'll go back to public forum and school committee. Motion to take uh, the agenda out of order. Okay, motion made by Dan to move report of superintendent. Second. Second by Chuck. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Great, thanks. We're Good evening. Excited to hear about the opening day and everything else you have on your list. Yes, thank you so much. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for that. Uh, we have a lot of visitors that are going to speak to the committee this evening about the incredible work that the school district is doing uh, and has done over the summer. So we're excited to kick off our meeting this evening uh, with many updates. Uh, from the summer and the start of the year. Uh, first, I'm actually going to ask our lead coach, Mary Colanino, if you could join us. That would be great. Mary's going to share a little bit about our summer uh, programming. As you know, <clears throat> we've had quite a bit of work happening in the uh, with kids in the month of months of July and August. Uh, we've actually had hundreds of children that Mary's going to talk about involved in summer programming that range from academic to athletics uh, to the arts and music to other enrichment um, opportunities and. Uh, it feels like the kids never left, mm -hmm. which has been great. Uh, so Mary, why don't you share a little bit about some of the summer work? Okay. Um, so all programs that we had this summer were well attended. We had over 444 students um, attend um, at least one of the programs. The extended school year program, we had 60 students um, for um, MES, the Math and Literacy Summer Enrichment. We had 24 students. Our 21st century summer program at the complex, we had 103 students for our summer re uh, credit recovery and enrichment. We had 125 students. And the Acceleration Academy, we had 132 students. And uh, I'd just like to say that for the credit recovery and the acceleration, the teachers really worked hard to take the, 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 the data from MCAS and and align it with their instruction that they did over the summer. They worked really hard on that. Um, our art program was extremely popular. We could probably have gone another week with the art program. Kids really loved it. Um, for the for the Acceleration Academy this year, we added a STEM, a STEM class that all of the kids had in their schedule at the middle school. And uh, Patrick Rosendale did that, and it was a really great. They built trebuchets and. Um, and little Rube, Rube Goldberg, like, you know, you put the marble in, things like that. Like, they did a whole bunch of things like that for two weeks. Um, and then this was the first year that the district had uh, language acquisition classes. We had two. We had one in July, and then another one during the Acceleration Academy for all of our mm -hmm. L students, and that was well attended, so much so that the parents had notified that asked if we could maybe do it for the elementary school kids next year as well which was really nice um 
we also did a, an ELL book study that I co-facilitated with Chris Taylor. Uh, she's in the, the, the Aspiring Superintendent program and, with, and she's a fellow with Jason. And um, she and I did a, um, a, book, a book study and the, the title of the book was Dispelling Misconceptions About English Language Learners. We had over 20, we had, we had 22 teachers attend. It was a weekly um, book study it was it was really awesome the the um the dialogue and um the interaction that we had with the teachers was was just really great very rich um and it, it, they've asked if we could do another one in the fall so we're going to we're going to do it with some more teachers so there'll be quite a few teachers that have that have had attended the book study um and i think that's it and so that what went into that, uh, just so the community is aware, um, it was over $150,000 in grants uh, that the school district wrote to be able to fund all of these programs, which is great. Um, all the programs had transportation, had feeding. We had a summer feeding site at uh, the uh, a JFK AFM uh, complex, as everybody knows, so that even if you were not involved in our programming, you could actually either take a ride down or ride your bike down and come and eat. Um, we had a, a real successful program with that. Thanks to Jennifer. We're going to meet Jennifer in a minute, um, our new food service director. Um, and uh, we looked at every possible barrier that we could to remove those barriers so that the students could access the programming. And so we're really, really proud of that. Also of our partnership with the Boys and Girls Club, we ran the shuttle bus again uh, from the Boys and Girls Club to the complex for those students who were involved in the 21st Century program. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the kids didn't have to pick, but they could access both. So we did a lot of, a lot of coordination uh, with the Boys and Girls Club again. Um, and that actually segued, uh, segued nicely into uh, our end of a summer. And I wanted to take this moment to thank uh, Matt Catalano and Unibank for their work around fundraising for school supplies, um, which is probably a good transition into the opening of uh, school uh, kickoff. Um, we were able to uh, supply full backpacks to over 30 students that needed them. So we were glad to be able to take that worry off the plates of our families. Um, and so, Mary, thank you. I know you worked very hard to coordinate all of that programming. And it was my kids, pleasure. Kids had a great time, so thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Mary. We are already opened in our meeting. I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking me. I would like to open our meeting because we have a quorum present. Are you you're having another public meeting during our public meeting? Our meeting is to attend your public meeting, but okay. we have a quorum present. Right. I'm not going to interrupt my agenda for for that. But um, sorry, Jason. That's go ahead. Good. Um, so uh, segueing into the start of the school year. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask our principals and uh, some of our directors to join us, but. Um, our school year really launched uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had a first of its kind uh, joint professional learning community meeting with principals from our region, uh, from uh, BMR, Hopedale, and Bellingham. Um, it was incredible. We spent a lot of time talking about instructional leadership and looking at ways to help support each other in supporting our students, our communities, our staff. Um, and it was a, really just kind of the launching point for that work. We're going to be working collaboratively with Hopedale and Bellingham leadership over the course of the school year. Um, when you're in a smaller system, it can feel very isolating. And so it's really nice to be able to pull some of these systems together. Uh, all of your leadership, pre-K to 12, come together in one space and really start you know, delving into the instructional leadership work. So that launched very well. Uh, on the 22nd of August, we moved into our own district leadership team retreat. Uh, we spent a lot of time outlining our goals, looking at both our data from um, like academic data, talking about our attendance data, looking at the feedback from our families and our community, and helping to set our goals for year two of our uh, district strategy or our blueprint 2.0. Um, from there, we welcomed our new staff on August 24th and 25th. I'm smiling because this is the most high energy, mm -hmm. uh, unique group, I think, of uh, educators who have ever welcomed into the district. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time talking about curriculum, looking at how we utilize uh, our, the information that we have available to us, our data, um, and I think most importantly, took a tour of our two towns. 
We visited all four of our schools, MES, the complex, the middle school, the high school, so they knew where everything was. We spent time touring um, both Blackstone and Millville, looking at the different neighborhoods where our kids are coming from and the different community kind of hot spots, where to get coffee, where not to get coffee, some of those kinds of things. A lot of our folks were new uh, to, our, to our two towns this year, not just to our district. Um, so that was great. Although in our uh, new hires, we do have a couple of alum, which is awesome. I always love bringing back uh, alumni. And uh, I'm at the point in my tenure here where we're hiring graduates that I had the pleasure of handing their diploma uh, out. So that was actually really awesome uh, with two of our new um, staff. Um, so we spent some time with our new faculty on the 24th and 25th. The 28th and 29th, we welcome back everybody. Um, and our uh, principals worked really hard with their instructional leadership teams to put together some real high impact professional development. We started the two days in their building. So each staff started with, their, uh, with each other in their own schools. But we came together at the end um, for a years of recognition uh, ceremony. Um, and uh, we hope what will become an annual uh, school competition, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Uh, each school, yeah, the high school is saying definitely not. Uh, each school had a team that they put together. Uh, we were up on stage. We had a whole, uh, it was about a half hour, 40 minutes we played, but it was a lot of fun. Who won? So. <laughs> Mrs. Grandpad is bowing. It might have been the complex. <laughs> but they were battling it out with the middle school at they the won. end. And I'm sad to say the central office got the lowest number of points, mm. but we were not playing. We were already. <laughs> uh, but it was super fun. Um, the question that was the tiebreaker question mm -hmm. at the end was what is our current enrollment, our current BMRSD enrollment, uh, and the school that was closest to that without going over one. Um, and our current enrollment is 1,550 students, which is awesome because it's about 100 more kids this year than we had last year at this time. So the kids are coming back to our community, staying with our community, which we're really excited about. Um, and the complex, got, they came the closest. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that, actually, I'd like to invite the principals up. I'm going to start with the elementary principals to just give a quick overview to the community about their kickoff. We'll come in here. <laughs> you don't get one without the other here. <laughs> so we start off, with, you should start off with congratulating me for winning that. <laughs> right? No, I have to but say. But I did get one of the Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was she a surprise. Was Jill, Jill, Jill baked Rice Krispie treats. Oh, she treats makes the most works. amazing Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> and the we had pom poms one. and yeah. everything. It was great. It was um, wow. Where do we start? I don't know. Yep. So we're going to start with the summer. Uh, we had a huge, I know Mary Carlino already talked about the summer programs, but we had the CCLC summer programs pretty much the whole summer. We had over 100 students participated. We had about eight um, high school graduates that we hired as instructional assistant. The kids love them. So it's so much fun. And I have to say that at the end of the program, they wanted to have the chopstick challenge. You have to use chopstick, pick up the balls, and run to the basket. And um, I, get, I get beat by one of the high school kids. I was not <laughs> happy about that. So um, it was a lot of fun. It was just bringing the whole community together. Um, so then we start school. Um, we worked very hard this summer mm -hmm. and uh, putting both school in the one building. Um, it went really well. Everyone was so accommodating and working so hard, put it together. And I post pictures of classrooms. It's just beautiful, both Millville and um, Complex. We're not, we say Millville at Millville MES at the Complex. <laughs> <laughs> um, so opening day a couple of days ago was great. Uh, kids had so much fun. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we actually took one of the um, leadership meeting um, leadership activities, the Compass. And we, we did it with the teachers, and the teachers did it with the kids in the classroom. It was just really. And I did the superhero one that we did yep. from leadership. Mm -hmm. And I, we had little superheroes, and they had to pick a superhero, rename it, mm -hmm. give it the three superpowers, or their three superpowers, and their one kryptonite. Mm -hmm. And they had to, and it was, it was quite, they shared it in teams. They were all sat pretty much in grade level teams. They shared it in grade level mm -hmm. teams, which is kind of a great way to see kind of like if you have a strength that someone else doesn't and you can kind of help each other off of that. Um, and, you know, it was 
then we did a scavenger hunt too since Mil since most of Millville staff have not been at the complex before. We did a scavenger hunt. Oh my gosh, they are the most competitive group of people. I didn't realize how they were running. They broke their teams up because we did a scavenger hunt in PowerPoint. They were running, they were laughing there. I could hear them saying, this is so much fun. They were, it was very competitive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. so then yesterday was our first day. Um, we kind of split up. Uh, Christina took care of the buses and I took care of parent pickup. Dr. Tafel kind of bounced back and forth. Um, <clears throat> I actually, it went a lot better than we expected because yeah, we we had highly kids to dismiss. Mm -hmm. So after that, we kind of met and made some tiny adjustment. This morning, mm -hmm. Christina and I met with our staff, you know, kind of shared the adjustments with them, and we cut the time in half today. And that was with all of the kindergartners. I was just, just going to say, kids, mm -hmm. which buses was too. We were 15 yep. minutes yeah. faster today yeah. with 100 extra kids in the building. Yeah. Actually, the 100 extra that take the bus because preschool mm -hmm. came in today too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we were 15 minutes faster today on the bus. The kids are great. I mean, they they're starting to get the routine. So, pen drop off was great. You know, mm -hmm. we had the staff go up there. 10 minutes early, let them in because there's a lot of, you know, cars drop off. So we don't want to go out to Menden Street. A um, couple of times I did have to call Christina because a couple of kiddos were crying. I don't do well with tears. I'm like, I need a new field principal. <laughs> so come here. <laughs> so I go over. This one's yours. Yeah. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> um, you did orientation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had, so um, prior to the move in, um, we had, well, we had a couple things going on. We had several family tours. Um, I would say we probably had between 100, 150 to 200 families there. Um, and that's not kids, that's families. So um, we did an, a Google um, form. Family signed up for what they wanted to come. And we still had people that weren't on the form. And then we had people that couldn't make it, so we had more tours. And then a couple others that really couldn't make it, so I did other tours. Um, so we had about four to six sessions of tours. Mm -hmm. Families were great. They had some great questions. Um, and then we had just had orientations. So yesterday we had four orientations. We had a 9.30, an 11, a 12.30, and a 1.30. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that I love about our <coughs> kindergarten orientation is we started this two or three I think it was two years ago, um, Telstone brings up a bus and they put it outside so our teachers can show the kids because they, they don't ride a bus. They, that day they come with their parents. They, show, they take them on the bus, show them how to sit on the bus because remember there's no car seats or seat belts or booster seats. Or, so they take them on, show them, you know, kind of explain the expectations for the bus um, and they take them by class so the teacher and the paraprofessional can explain it to their students. And the students loved it. They loved getting on. And they all came back today. And they all said they were coming back when they were leaving today. They said they're going to come back on Tuesday. So, um, and you know, the t ones that had tears, we checked in with families during the day. And their tears were gone. And they were having a blast. Um, they made their first day of kindergarten crowns. And super excited to be there. Um, and they're the reason why we do the job we do. Um, their smiling faces being in the building. and. They're so excited to show us the different things they learned throughout the year. So, um, so it's been great having them back and the staff too. <laughs> it's great. Uh, we have we we run around the district on the first day and try to hit all the buildings. But um, it was really nice coming to the complex. I mean, even seeing all of our little ones with some of the older ones, and they did. They all just came in. It was it was really great. Yeah. A lot of kids, mm -hmm. but it was. It I've great. said it's been nice too because if there's like you know a kindergarten looks a little nervous I say oh you come on over can you because some of them I you know I've had too so I'm like oh why don't you take this child and walk them to the bus so they've been great to help in that regard too what was fun this morning was it was almost like another day one because the kindergartners and the pre-k kids started today so the first and second graders that have kindergarten siblings or pre-k <laughs> siblings that were all coming together the older sibling was just beaming. This is my little sister. <laughs> <laughs> and they were walking you know, around holding hands, and it was just it's very heartwarming to see. It was a great, great couple of days. And we both had an ice cream social, and mm -hmm. it was great turnout. It was a lot of families there. Even the second day was kind of drizzling a little bit, but they stay, and it was really good to see all the most of the parents there. Um, today, actually, I had a chance to do second grade lunch, and they looked at me. I'm like, yeah, you better remember this face, and you're gonna see me next year. <laughs> so it was kind of nice having you there and uh, seeing your kids. Um, so we are, Meet the Teacher Night is uh, complex, it's September 13, and MES is September 14. 
you're doing? Um, so we're going to do something a little different this year. We're actually going to do um, a scavenger hunt because oftentimes parents don't go see the specialists. So, you know, our, our art teachers, our music teachers, mm -hmm. our PE teachers kind of sit there. Last year we had them at tables, but mm -hmm. we're going to do something a little different, get the families involved. So we're making a scavenger hunt similar to what we did with staff so that families have to go around and then we'll have little prizes at the end. They have to get little charger stamps like horse mm -hmm. um, shoe stamps. Um, to go visit the different teachers and um, that was something our ILT came mm -hmm. up with um, that they thought would be a fun way to get families involved and they will still have the family presentations going on in the room but also to kind of get it and make it more a little more interactive for staff and families. And we got a grant this year for ST Math so that night we're going to have a set up for parents to try to solve some math problems mm -hmm. with our words. <laughs> so that's our, you know, that's and then the only other yeah. thing we got we had we got a grant the second year of our grant for the early literacy grant um, and for the PD day we had the, the literacy consultant in and she did a couple hours of kind of a refresher slash introduction for the new staff and um, everyone was super engaged and um, they're already starting to use the stuff in the first couple days of school they're already starting to use the materials super excited about working with her again um, and watch our kids grow we actually presented um, at a showcase in May uh, with all the other schools from Massachusetts that received the grant and and we put a 12 minute video in it together it was like 42 minutes actually but then when it was spliced and everything it was 12 minutes and we actually shared that with the staff because the staff hadn't had a chance to see it yet um, and the, of course those that did it were a little more embarrassed but they did a great job the kids were awesome in the video the growth from them was fantastic too so we're looking forward to the second year of having this grant in our building as well that's it. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Mary Jufri. You may know her as Mary Cotillo. Now, Mary Jufri, married this summer. Congratulations. Thank you. you Principal, formerly known as. <laughs> quick update on the middle school. Open. Yes. So um, this year was super. The orientation days with the new staff are some of my favorite days. We have nine new staff at the middle school this year. Two, I wrote them down because I always think I'm missing one. Two eighth grade science teachers, a new STEM tech teacher, a new phys ed teacher, seventh grade special education, essentials, band, and a new paraprofessional. And a partridge in a pear tree. And they're wonderful and excited and it's been phenomenal getting in their classroom the classrooms the first two days seeing them engage with kids very excited to have them on board we spent our two they sounded like they had way more fun in their orientation like doing scavenger hunts and things i was like we did data we like woo data um and committed to a school-wide instructional focus that is a little bit of a shift from before uh, before we were focusing on collaboration critical thinking and academic discourse and we're sticking with collaboration and critical thinking and we're moving in the direction of reflection thinking about the things that we've done well with our students. What's working, what's not, what can I do differently, how can I improve in connection with collaboration and critical thinking. So I'm super excited about that. The final wording hasn't been worked out yet, but those are the three big ideas. We had our open door days last week, Thursday and Friday, very well attended. Our seventh and eighth grade students acted as tour guides for the sixth graders. That was lots of fun. Our PTO hosted a kickball game last Thursday. It wasn't super well attended, mostly because we have a lot of competing things happening with sports tryouts and you know town soccer, but the folks who showed up, holy Toledo, did we have a good time and the students um, handed us a uh, pretty significant loss. But we're not going to talk about that. I, I wondered if our new phys ed teacher was going to come back. He was like, are you kidding me? He's <laughs> like, we're going to have to build this into the uh, interview process from now on because I don't know if I can be associated with you people. <laughs> and he did his student teaching here, right? At the he high school? did. He yeah. was a student teacher at the high school. Yes. Our essentials teacher is a graduate of BMR. Uh, great. I'm so excited about the folks we have on board. 
So yesterday and today we welcomed 130 new sixth graders and I have decided my new favorite thing in the world is just hanging out in the hall as sixth graders are learning how to open lockers. <laughs> you have never heard so much excitement. I got it! The high five at each other and oh, it's so much fun. Like you don't know joy until you've seen the joy of a sixth grader opening a locker. We had an assembly, a whole school assembly um, Wednesday morning and recommitted to being a cell phone free school. I recommitted them to being a cell phone free school. They're coming along with me whether they want to or not. Um, today was our first day with advisory, which is a new shorter block in the middle of the day. Half half of the days will be based on helping kids with social situations it really resulted from this time in our schedules a direct result of some data that we received last year showing that our students don't really feel connected to the school i want to make sure that every single student in the school has an adult in the school that they can connect to so that's the advisory period so on Odd number days, we're going to be focusing on the social things, and on the even number days, we're going to, did I do that right? Odd even, yes. We're gonna be talking about more academic things. So today, walked through, saw some advisory classes. My favorite one was the teacher who had printed out an image of a place setting, talking about how do you set the table for learning? and the students identified the plate as the Chromebook and the fork as the writing utensil, those kinds of things. I thought I was super clever when I was like, you know, you come to school with an uncharged Chromebook that's like eating an entree on a dessert plate, and they're just, I was like, that's brilliant, come on, come on. <laughs> they didn't seem to think so. Um, and let's see. Our Meet the Teacher Night is September 21st. I'm going to invite families to meet with me and Dr. Laporte for half an hour before they go off to meet with their team teachers. And I think that is pretty much it. I cannot wait to get the kids back again next week. It is so phenomenal to have students in the buildings again. The energy is so positive and we're having a great time. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Principal Fowlis from the high school. <clears throat> there may have been some karaoke today. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna hear about that. Um, so we also um, started last week with our open house, um, probably the, well, definitely the best attended um, event that we had. We had 28 of our 30 graded academy students um, present and we had 68 of our 101 freshmen come so they were ready they were excited it was a, it was really a great experience um, we uh, welcomed just under uh, 400 students although um, there were two people in the building today looking to register their kids and they happen to be high school students so go us um, we began with an assembly to welcome our class of 2027 in our grade 8 Academy they were probably a little traumatized because we had them enter into the gym with everybody clapping for them but they'll get over it, it'll be fine but we wanted to make sure we welcomed them into the community um, we're excited to have them each class had a class meeting we finished those up today. Uh, my mantra is to be present 53 minutes at a time. So we are not doing the um, packs to hide the cell phones or everything. Our students need to learn how to be responsible and use them responsibly. Um, I will say I had to speak to one student over the, past, over the course of the two days that was at one student to keep their phones off. So they um, are gonna be our high engagement. And um, again, it, at the bottom of every of our for cell phone policy, it says be present 53 minutes at a time. We're not asking them to be off social media or to give their phone to somebody. We're just asking them to be present during our time. Um, let's see, our focus this year is on collaboration and over the two days we saw lots of spaghetti and marshmallow towers and uh, balloon towers and a lot of collaborative peace. Um, our staff is really kicking it off well. Um, one of the things that the 10th, 11th and 12th graders did and the 9th graders will be doing next week is an activity that we did in the leadership 
team um, on one of our retreat days and it's a compass activity and it's a north south east west and it's basically a myers-briggs personality test and and wanting them to understand how to show up in a collaborative environment and to know that um, people don't always participate the way you participate um, and so now they've got the the verbiage of north south east west um, and so hopefully that will be able to help us with our modeling of how to collaborate effectively. Um, Tuesday is our first day one. We've been in double zero days for the last two days. Um, we finished today with field events and uh, now the annual lip sync battle. Um, that's how I welcomed myself three years ago and it has continued. We had a great time and um, I'm very disappointed. I mentioned that our students do not know um, Prince when I sang uh, lip sync, uh, let's go crazy. So we're gonna be doing some music education <laughs> in, our, in our school as well, I promise you that. Um, students have until September 14th to make any schedule changes. And uh, our Meet the Teacher Night is the 28th with our homecoming on the 6th and 7th of October. And my newsletter will be going out over the weekend, so check your emails. <laughs> and you'll be joining us in a, in a couple more minutes to I talk will. about our oh, AP scores. I can't wait to tell you all about my AP scores. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you, Jill. Thank you. Uh, we're going to roll right into marching band if Mr. Schaefer wouldn't mind joining us for just a couple of minutes and share a brief update on the happenings in our marching band uh, season so far and the good stuff to come. So there's a copy of our performance schedule coming around. Um, it's not much different than other years. We end at MetLife Stadium, uh, which is always the, the, the cream of the crop for the kids. Uh, our season started on June 13th. We practiced all summer long. Um, anyone that lives within about a mile radius probably knows that, and I apologize. Um, our show this year is called Cathedral Halls, and basically the backdrop of the football field is going to be eight 12-foot tall stained glass window frames. I say stained glass because there's no, actually no glass in them. That would be a little challenging and a little heavy. Uh, it's just the metal frame to give the image of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so Cathedral Halls, it's, it's different. In the past, we've done shows that are kind of have a plot to them. Like last year, baking a cake. We did Oz the year before that. This show is just this idea of a cathedral. That's it. Nothing really to, to grasp onto besides that. Um, the uniforms this year are, are, are something we've never done before, where the kids have, I don't want to ruin it, but um, what they start the show with is not what they end the show with. And I'll leave it at that. And then you can, <laughs> you can come see a show and see what happens. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, I have to say, we lost 17 seniors last year, uh, which is huge. And it was a little scary, but the kids we have in have just blown our minds. The entire staff, um, even the, the you know, besides Mr. Marcotte, Mr. Chan, and myself, have been really impressed with how much progress they've made. So we're very excited. It should be a fun season. Your jazz ensemble that played for the staff at lunch Tuesday oh. was amazing. Great. And that, that was a group you did over the summer, right? Yeah, that was what we did with the enrichment. They were amazing. And uh, yeah, it's incredible because what those kids did is that they learned how to improvise. And improvise basically is like, you know, if you learn a, a foreign language and then are told you have to stand up and give a improvised monologue, that's basically what these kids do. They stand up on their instrument and they just make up, you know, I don't want to say make up, but they play uh, a series of notes off the top of their head based on just a few loose rules. And uh, yeah, it's impressive to see what they did. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you for doing that. So come out and see a show. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Our home Mr. shows at Bellingham High School is here, so. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We're gonna roll right into athletics. And actually we have a little bit of, um, just a couple of slides for folks that, that um, mm -hmm. our AD, uh, Sam Yoder, is gonna walk through. Uh, community here. Let's pull it up on the screen in a second. You've had a busy season as well so far. Busy, busy. It's good though. So I did survive my first year under Principal Fallis. <laughs> so I'm back. Um, you just press the next slide. So this was about a week ago. Uh, since then, we've added probably 20 more student athletes. So we have about 220 student athletes, 6 to 12, uh, which is a big jump from last year. Even further, it's really I'll just put it away. 
Uh, yeah, so football is probably up towards 50-ish um, kids now, 9 to 12. Uh, volleyball looks to have a great year, returning everybody. Um, we have one of the best student athletes in the state uh, on our team as the captain. Uh, so there's about probably 30 now. Girls soccer we're fielding. Uh, middle school and varsity team. We lost a lot of seniors. They're young. Um, but they'll be all right. Uh, boys soccer, we have a ton of middle school kids, uh, not many high schoolers. But what we're gonna do is um, take some of those more skilled eighth graders and the few freshmen that came out and give them some JV games so that we can grow the program back to where it used to be. Uh, field hockey, this has changed since then. Um, that number is still about the same, so. It, it would be tough to field the JV team, so we're just going to go with a varsity team this year. Um, cross country, thanks to a great freshman class, uh, we have a boys team. Uh, and that's across the board. The freshman class, a lot of great student athletes. Uh, and the middle school is still thriving, probably around 20 now, <coughs> cross country. And then the cheer team's huge. So, uh, all around, the numbers are great, and that's what we're looking for. Are any of these co-ops? Uh, yeah, so football is a co-op. Still Hopedale? Hopedale, although there's only one kid. Oh, so. so next year when I reapply for it, we'll probably get shot down because it's not, you know, that's not the true meaning of a co-op. Um, so that's one, and then the other one is field hockey with Douglas. <clears throat> we only have two girls from there, so that'll probably get shot down as well. Wow. Which is fine, though. We can still field teams without those other schools. Sam, question. So students who have been playing with us, well, then, if the co-op gets shot down, they can't continue through, or can they? Yeah. Um, no. In that case, no. Yeah. So that's out of my control. I can only apply for it. Um, they're kind of cracking down on those things co-ops well I think I, I think we'll have to have other meetings about that and and stay positive because yeah. it's something yeah. that we've needed in the past right and obviously these other schools that are sending one or two need it for their kids to be able to participate so yeah just so you know where we stand oh sure it's something that I, I don't think any of us want to lose yeah I mean yeah I mean either I think you know you want every kid who wants to play to be able to play right. um, like the state sort of looks at it in a different way. But yeah, we'll definitely fight to keep them best we can. But you know, in another way it's good. It shows that we're supporting our own teams with our own kids in our own district. So uh, yeah, so that's it for numbers. You could change the slide. I don't know who's trying to go from here. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, and just some upcoming events. So next week, game start, uh, girls soccer on Tuesday. Um, they're heading up to Keefe Tech. And we got homecoming week, first week of October, which wraps up with a night game against St. Paul's. We're working on getting lights for the entire week so that girls soccer, field hockey can all have night games. You know, they love that stuff. So um, stay tuned. I created this website this summer, which was sent out to families. It has all the information you need, schedules, forms, um, coaches information etc and that's um homecoming is not the sixth and seventh then it's when is ho homecoming what's that homecoming you have uh, it as, this as a week the homecoming uh football game is the sixth so all the other teams do they play on soccer Saturday? volleyball field hockey so uh i think that's a Bigger discussion we need to have, I guess. Um, some, you know, the individual teams all want night games. So maybe we have a homecoming week. Um, but we could certainly have, right now they're all scheduled for the six, so we could keep it that way. Homecoming week makes it, if you stretch it out that way, it makes it a little tough for each team to support <clears throat> each other. If you, if you stretch it out, you mean? Yeah, like if you're doing it on weeknights, I, I just, 
I don't know, I guess I'm used to homecoming being like a community event yeah. instead of like stretched out because then if football has a practice, how are they going to support field hockey's homecoming game? I don't know, I, I'm just used to it being over the weekends as like a big community event. Yeah. So do you know the schedule for field hockey, volleyball, soccer? Yeah, so right now, volleyball, field hockey, uh, soccer, and football. It's all on Friday, as is, scheduled. So why would so you it's all have football up there? I'm how just... do we, how do all those teams play after school on Friday? So it's, it's, um, so, you know, soccer's down on the soccer field. So they're all going to be playing at the same time? So it's either that or you spread it out over multiple days. Because we only have so many fields. I guess I'm just thinking back to last year where we did it kind of like spread out on Saturday. And we could kind of put it out to the community as a, like a come see. It's like a big day. Yeah. A big event, kind of. School like. spirit, community involvement, all of that. <coughs> Was it? I know football played Friday night last year. And everybody else, I and everyone played else played on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely open to whatever works best for the community. And, uh, you know, I can speak with my principal about that. I just think that would be a nice way to kind of showcase what our kids do in the yeah. community. Yeah, kind of. Sure. Sam, I did have um, just one kind of thing I wanted to just ask on an update yeah. was the banners because now that the games are starting I'm just wondering where we're at with the banners with the athletic boosters um, especially like I was wondering if like are they going to be there for homecoming and stuff yeah I mean um, so those are going out Tuesday oh, okay. um, uh, to various businesses and we'll have to wait to hear back um, so, oh, I so the banners aren't going up no, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The outreach. That's pretty much all I have for the fall. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Um, next up, Ms. Fallis, if you want to rejoin us we're going to take a few minutes and walk through last year's uh advanced placement scores um just to follow back on the homecoming that was feedback from the students who really wanted to each have a night game which was why that happened that was from last year's group so if this year's group wants to change that that's fine but that was where the feedback came from i just want to <laughs> but are they scheduled for friday night right now the the uh, this games? soccer field hockey i don't have the schedule in front field of me but we can make that field, right? Yeah. Field hockey and football yeah. are the same field, yeah. So, but that that was the original. That was the feedback from the kids. I I we liked the the Sunday, the Saturday where everybody went. Well, there was plenty of time to to change that. But I that was feedback from the students. So, I will uh, as soon as I know, I will update you on the 14th and let you know what the schedule is. And maybe I'll even have a flyer for everybody to have that. So, um, our AP scores. Um, <coughs> We're great. <laughs> I was, I'm very pleased with our AP scores. And so um, on the second slide, you'll see that um, who's taking our, the majority of our students who are taking um, AP are 11th grade. Um, however, um, so in 10th grade, the only AP offering is AP US history. Um, I will say that in the pipeline, there is an AP, um, it'll be either AP seminar or AP research, which is the foundational class that they, uh, that the AP college board likes to even, likes to have freshmen take. So that will be in the offerings for, um, in the works for offering next year. So our current eighth grade will have the opportunity to take even more of that AP. But more importantly, it will get, provide them with the foundational tools that they will need to then continue on with and be even more successful with our students. Um, more of our women are taking AP exams, but the, the, the men are there and they're taking, they actually take more of that. Um, I will say, um, it is 17% of our students enrolled in 9 through 12 take AP courses. We would like to see that number increase. We would like to see that number increase. Um, next slide. 
Uh, so I, I just wanted to point out, these are the, the scores for those of you who don't understand what the AP scores mean. Um, they're scored based on a um, one to five, five being the highest score, three is considered passing. And so when we look at our statistics between um, the three to five, um, that's what you're looking to see the most. Our goal is to have no ones. Um, I'm really happy when we get to that slide. You can go to the next slide, please, um, to see what, uh, where we are in that. We had the fewest number of uh, ones in, um, in a while, um, which we're really thrilled about. Um, even more so thrilled about the fact that our enrollment in the number of exams has increased by about 30. I believe there's 106 students taking an AP exam. Not 106 students, but several are taking multiple, but there are 106 exams that will be taken um, in uh, May. Um, next slide looks at the totals, which is where you will really see um, the impressive that, you know, 74% passing rate of three or higher. Um, and that's a 20% increase over 2022. Um, the, the, the students really just knocked it out of the park and we were just so impressed um, with what they're doing um, and how dedicated they were to this. Um, and I include in that the senior class because usually by May, when you're two weeks out from graduation and you've already got your college acceptance and you really don't care as much, sometimes they don't do that. I'm not, you know, talking about my daughter at all who did that to me twice, but um, you know, th these are the things that we find that they just don't they just don't worry about it as much. Um, but they really did a great job and I'm very proud of them. I want to give some shout outs on the next slide. We had 9 students score a 5. 9 students score a 5. We're very proud of them for the students who are still here. Um, I had um, our um, graphics department they made me a big poster that says I got a five on the AP exam and so I'm going to have the students hold their uh, five and we're going to send that in the newsletter so look for that newsletter on September 15th so we're really happy if any of your children are out there that will be home for college or haven't left yet and they've <coughs> five, send them to me I will take their picture as well so we're really we're really proud of of the work that they did um the takeaways on my last slide I just wanted to look back. I looked back at the um, uh, last year's presentation that I had, and so they were the takeaways that I had and where we are and where we're going from here. Um, I'm very pleased that we increased the number of students scoring a five, um, doubled it from four to nine. That's very hard to do. Some of these exams are, ex are grueling. Um, and so what our next steps will be is to sit down with the teachers and talk about where we go, what went well, and where can we make some quarter turns to enhance and to get more of our students there. Um, in the next one was in 2023, a uh, student score two or higher. We went from 17 students, and then we only had three students uh, not score at least a two. Um, just to give you a frame of reference, as a former AP teacher, you know anybody who, taking the exam would get a one. And the goal that I would always have is I want to teach you the skills to at least move you. So when you move from that one where anybody who takes a test and you move into that two range, you are learning those skills. So that's showing that evidence of that growth. Um, obviously, we want to have them in the three and fours and fives because then they have the possibility of receiving college credit. Um, and then our enrollment did dip this year. However, like I mentioned, oh, 109 students projected for taking um, AP exams. That has been because of our advertising. We've had students from the current APs going down into the honors, into the CP classes to share with them their experiences, to let them know that no, it's not going to be the only thing you do with your life on your junior year or your senior year, um, and to let them know that they can do it. So uh, very pleased with our numbers. I was very excited. I sent messages to Dr. DeFalco over the summer, and I said, I can't wait for the school committee meeting for these numbers. So <laughs> there you go. I might need to send it to Tammy. I don't know if students realize just how important some of these classes are. Having a college freshman start with 15 college credits already. Like, That's crazy. She's almost a full semester ahead just from what she was able to do at BMR. That's which crazy. That's a huge selling point to his class. My, my hope is that by adding the um, AP research as a elective to our freshmen, um, 
it you know you don't know it if you're an honor student or not i mean you might know a little bit maybe a math piece but you know you enter in freshman year in this in this level playing field and i would love to see several sections of that because that class is not just going to give you the foundation that you're going to need for every single class every research anytime you write that's going to be helpful so i'm just i've just started to dabble into looking at that class but i'm really excited to get that moving for for next year and to really raise that that foundational piece we'll grab them at the beginning and there is an ap test for that so they would also get ap credit for that and next year also we are going to be adding i just forgot um a pre a we're going to be adding ap pre-calc it was the, this is the first year of having AP pre-calc um, offered. We decided that the staff decided that as a team they were going to wait one year just to see how everything goes and let somebody else learn first and then we're going to reap the benefits of their knowledge and then we are going to, um, there won't be an honors level, it will be an AP pre-calc level. And that is also an exam that you get three credits for. So we'll be adding two at least. Yeah, congratulations, Jill, yeah, and thanks. to the staff and to yeah. the students and families. This is tremendous. They, they, you know, we are a small high school, but we are a very, very mighty high school. Yeah. We have something for everybody. And I think we saw that tonight in terms We're of excited. Thank you. all of our updates. Thanks so much. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'd like to shift gears and just introduce uh, just very briefly two new members to our team. Um, um, we're going to start with Jennifer Paradise, who is our new food service director. Jennifer, if you want to join us up front for just a moment. Um, Jennifer started with us in January as our administrative assistant in the food service department mm -hmm. and took the plunge into the leadership position. So welcome. If you want to say a few words to the committee, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, welcome. Oh, thank you all for having me. I'm really excited to um, be part of the team over here. I did start as the admin, so I got a slow... Um, access to everybody and it's been a great experience so far a great community and everything and with the passing of the free meals this year for the kids and indefinitely it's a great time to be in the program so we can kind of develop it and bring new things <coughs> into our, for our students and it's free breakfast and lunch right? free breakfast and lunch yes yeah. That's great. yeah so any families watching you don't have to worry about that we can take that burden off your plate for you exactly no pun intended yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Nice to meet you. And uh, next, I'd like to introduce Laura Damon, who is our uh, newest member to our business office, our central office team. She is, uh, Laura is our new HR specialist. So welcome, Laura. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for shifting the agenda tonight and allowing us to join all of you. Um, I'm very excited about joining the central office and with the team with Jason, Jill, and Denise. Um, I'm joining you from Walpole. That was my previous district. Um, I was an admin in the main office in an elementary school. I have a um, very interesting background. I am educated as a teacher and I've also worked in corporate. So I'm sort of blending both backgrounds into this HR role. Um, very excited about taking on this role and everything that will come along and being the face of HR for the district. Um, I'm local, I live in Franklin, so it's very interesting to hear the difference in a district this size compared to where I live. Just looking at the difference in student athletes is unreal. Um, I think of my daughters and they probably would both started as varsity as freshmen, <laughs> but on soccer, but it's very different. So it's very exciting to learn the difference at a smaller district and I'm excited for that. And although I have two student athletes in Franklin, I we will have certainly. <laughs> I will, I know, they're both my daughters. Can Franklin I switch to time. BMR and you know get on to varsity? Come here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very excited to join the district and getting to know all of you. Thanks, Laura. You're welcome. Have you been in to the office yet? Or I have. Oh, yes. Started, I know that. Uh, Tuesday. 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 I started yeah, officially. Yeah, she's yes. Yeah. Okay, yep. Here and there. You really are going to be the first face to our new families, and you know and when they come in to re-register, it's all in that central office, so. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it is the face of the district for sure. Yes. yes, but I'm excited for it. Thank you very much. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice Thanks to meet all of you. And lastly, I'm gonna ask Dan Saltzman, our uh, tech lead, to join us for a few minutes. Um, the committee, I'm sure, recalls that we've talked uh, the past year about setting up an electronic re-registration process, so, um, you know, each year the big packets that go home for parents to walk through. 
Um, having done them myself and having to do them myself again uh, in my own district, it's, I know it's a lot of paperwork. Um, so uh, Dan and the tech team have been working for quite some time. We have all of our new registrations done in our Family Welcome Center um, electronically, but uh, we have been working on the second phase of that, which is our new uh, our returning families. And we had a little snafu. Um, our administrative assistants uh, and administrators at the elementary level are so efficient before we could roll out the electronic version they already handed the packets out <laughs> so our elementary families got the paper packets uh, before we could roll out the electronic version of this so we don't want to confuse anybody we'll just have the elementary families do the paper this year uh, they already have them um, that is just how effective and efficient our elementary teams are um, and we're going to do the uh, re-registration with our middle and high school families this year. Uh, again, just so nobody gets confused. Um, and so Dan's going to actually walk us through for just a couple of minutes in terms of how this works and what this looks like, right? So, yep. Dan, thanks for being here. Yep. So on the screen here, I'm logged in as a test parent. This is not live yet, so people can't see this. But this is what people will see when we turn this on next, next week. Um, you'll log in. You'll see the screen. There'll be instructions that people will have. You go down to the... I don't know how well you guys can see this, but this is the returning student annual update section. Can you expand it, Dan, so it fills the screen there? Yeah, it's not really going to be much easier to see, but... Just a little um, wider. <laughs> so I'm going to open up this form, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you don't need a ton of instruction on this. It's pretty self-explanatory, but there is instructions, and you just you walk through this process, which we're going to do right now. So we're at the start page. Um, there is a little bit of instructions, and you're just gonna confirm that you're looking at the right student at the bottom here. Click next. Uh, a big red banner that is warning you that you have to fill out the stuff that has the red asterisks. That's really important. Um, so you're just gonna start walking through this. Confirm name, all that kind of stuff. Uh, is your address correct? We've got the physical address, the mailing address. You can make changes uh, here in this box. Any changes that people make are submitted into a queue. They don't just change the database right off the bat. They go into a queue, and the building admins will then look at that queue and approve changes and push it through to the actual database. Um, down at the bottom of the screen, we have some state required information about housing and residence. When you're done with that, you click Next, and you're now in the very important Family Contact tab. Here we've got the primary contact at the top, and there could be a couple of those. And then we've got secondary contacts in the middle area of the screen. You could add additional contacts if you wanted to, um, or you could edit things, uh, phone numbers, addresses, things like that. You could request to delete a contact. Again, anything like that, it doesn't actually remove it from the database. It just flags it as this is somebody that we want to delete, and the building admins would then go ahead and do that when they're reviewing it. Um, there's some legal information down here, and you would fill that out if necessary. Click Next. Again, the warning about the <coughs> asterisks. This is really important. You have, to, uh, you have to answer every question that has the asterisk. We've got some medical information here, uh, allergies, things like that. Uh, does your child have asthma? You've got to answer these questions. Do you allow your child to have Tylenol and Advil and all that kind of stuff? You'll fill that out again at the bottom. Hit Next. And in the additional information, we have uh, sort of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, do you approve using your child's photo in promotional material, some, you know, stuff like that? Uh, do you allow military recruiters to talk to your kids? We've got bus transportation information down in this bottom section. And again, you're going to make sure that you have everything filled out for the asterisks. Click Next. And you get to the end. It tells you that you've reached the end of the form. Now. I have intentionally left a couple things out. When you hit submit, there is this warning here that tells you you, you can't submit it yet because you haven't filled out uh, a few different fields. So I'm going to go back to the student screen, and I forgot to do, the, is the address correct? So I could say yes here, or I could say no, and down here, put in some change to the address. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go to the health screen where I forgot to fill out the hearing aid question. So I'm going to say no to that one. And also the hydrocortisone cream, do I allow that? Yes, I do. Click Next. 
and then next again, and we're at the submit screen. I'm gonna hit submit, and it worked, and that's it. And you do that for each of your students. It's pretty quick, pretty easy. It's a lot easier than filling out all these forms where each form has 50% of the questions are the same. You know, how many times do you wanna write the name of your, of your student? So this is just a much more efficient way to do it, and we're looking forward to rolling it out. So our family's going to be notified from middle school and high school next week? Middle school and high school, yep. We're also gonna have a, a training video so that you, you know, might be easier. Some parents can just click and watch it and it'll be kind of a, a model of what Dan just did. Now, is it something that can be updated when you get a call from the nurse and they say, you never signed the release? Can, they, can the parent do it like for the Tylenol? Or is it only live for a certain amount of time at the beginning of school? Could you have it in there the whole year, you're saying? Yeah, to go can in? they modify it? Can they? You and could. I don't know if that's something that, honestly, I haven't thought about whether we would want to have that available. Again, it doesn't actually change the database, so in theory, you could leave it up there, but then you'd have to have the admins checking that queue, and I think that's probably not what we want to do. So I Yeah, think the idea was that any change that would be made would go into this kind of a, 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 like a waiting area where the admin assistant would get flagged that there are changes made, they would go in, Yep. Verify the changes and then approve it, or accept Maybe them. Not approve it, but accept it them. Could be something. You can change your emergency contact or. The the problem with that is uh, if you put incorrect data in, or if you put somebody went into someone's account and put someone else's information in, it could get tricky. And I think that's why you you want to have a person looking at the data that's been put in and approving it. But it is something that we could think about definitely. It's a great step in the mm -hmm. a direction we've been asking for for a very long time. Yeah. So. And Dan, it's accessible much more for all of our families. I'm sorry? It's accessible for all of our families for other languages. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. Different translations are available. Very exciting. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. That concludes my report. <laughs> um, I just want to point out that um, while we were getting our opening school from all of the administrators, I was just writing down words that were being repeated over and over. So kind of like you make that word pool and mm -hmm. it generates and it comes up with the commonly used words. And the words I got, I want to share because I think it shows like the excitement of what was presented to us at the beginning of your, so grants, um, I think that's huge for our district. We, we have to remember um, and keep highlighting how much money has been brought into our district to support so many things that have been happening here that we never used to be able to talk about, um, including the summer program and the excitement from that. Uh, so grants, kids, new, excited, engage, advisory, data, welcoming, focus, um, and compass, actually. <laughs> I was like, I have to write this down because I, I know that was a highlight for administrators and to see that trickled down and reiterated um it it really meant something so uh, i just wanted to point out what i got out of everyone's presentation so thank you for your thank you for that um so now we're going to move backwards to public forum um and then we'll go through school committee, business office, unless someone wants to do something else out of order. Um, so if there's anyone here that wanted to address us for public forum, now is the time. If you could just introduce yourself, um, name, where you're from, and I am going to point out that uh, we do typically have a three-minute cap on public forum. I'm going to guess that maybe you meant to ask to be on our agenda and not attend the meeting. I don't know. I, I did not know we were posting a meeting in conjunction with um, our current meeting. So if there was something specific you wanted to talk about. Um, yep, so I'm sort of sorry. I thought I sent an email. Saying that I received an email from you saying you were going to attend our meeting, and I said you're welcome to attend any public meeting we ever have. Yep. And I never. Put any I, other okay, so I apologize for that. Thought that wasn't clearly communicated. 
and I'm um, actually in speaking with our TA with a duly posted meeting and a quorum. It's assumed we're in session, so I'm, but if anyone has issues with that, certainly willing to discuss. Um, but I think that brings me to why I wanted to come up, and that's because I think that we've had trouble communicating. Can you, I'm just. Oh, sorry, Jennifer yourself, Gill. Sorry. Yes, no, you said that first, sorry. <laughs> Jennifer Gill, Chair of the Board of Selectmen from Millville. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So um, I think we've had communication issues. So I thought I would try to improve that um, in terms of the MES water situation. Like I think there, you might have milestones in mind or things you're looking to see. So I have thought about this myself with the town administrator and we've talked about it a little bit. I haven't talked that with the rest of the board so I didn't wanna share that here tonight. But if anyone here was like, or if you all had, this is what I think success looks like for a resolution, I would welcome that input. And then, because I think milestones have been elusive, like so for example, with um, uh, when the email went out on July 11th and it said, you know, by August 14th, so I thought a decision would be made on August 14th, not July 27th, for example. So I wanna make sure that we're better aligned in that way. Um, so just food for thought. I know it's not on your agenda tonight, and so I don't, you know, I'm not trying to get anyone into trouble, but just if you all had, this is what we want a resolution to look like, and you wanted to communicate to, that to us. We have a meeting on September 5th. I know that might be too quick. Allegedly our next meeting September 18th, but I'm away, so we may or may not move that. Um, so that's it. That's all I just wanted to offer is in, to improve the communication. Any comments or questions for Jennifer? And then since I don't want to interrupt again, after the open meeting law violation, the Board of Select will go over there and adjourn our meeting and then we can go. Uh, if Thank I, you. If, yes. <coughs> you, only because you asked, because this is like public uh, good and welfare. Of, um, our next <coughs> item is the open meeting law complaint mm -hmm. on our agenda. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't aware Millville was having a selectman's meeting here tonight. Yep, that's my fault. I'm sorry. Um, Be sure to send the agenda to Dr. DeFalco and Aaron when you do that. I guess I can, I can address some of, respond to that under the, our next agenda item. So, so that I'm not discussing anything under public forum. So I'll, ba I'll back off. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Sorry. Don't put your phone near the microphone. <laughs> I, think that's I was going to say that when you sat down today. Okay. Is that, I think I'm within my three minutes. All that. Anything else? Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Was there anyone else that wanted to address us during public forum tonight? Okay. So we'll move on to um, School committee forum, uh, sorry, school committee items in its discussion and resolution of the open meeting law complaint filed by Jennifer Gill on August 23rd. Um, so I received an email from Jennifer Gill on August 23rd. I believe she filed it as the chair of the selectmen uh, for Millville, Board of Selectmen. Um, it's filed on behalf of the Millville Board of Selectmen, alleging that the school committee did not provide the public with proper notice of the vote to move students from the Millville Elementary School due to issues with the water there. So when an open, open meeting law complaint is filed, um, there are required steps, and the first one is to circulate the complaint to the full committee. Um, I did that by email on Tuesday, August 29th. Um, we then have 14 bus business days from the date of receipt uh, to meet and review the allegations, to take remedial action if appropriate, to notify the complainant of the remedial action, and to forward a copy of the complaint and uh, description of the remedial action to the complainant and the attorney general. So we're meeting and reviewing those allegations tonight. 
which is August 31st. So we're well within the 14 business days. Um, but the 14 business days would have given us until uh, September 13th. So as noted in the agenda for tonight's meeting, we are meeting to review the allegations discussed and possible remedial, remedial actions, if any. Um, I do want to share some initial thoughts on the response, um, but I've made notes to do that just so I'm accurate. I believe Jennifer alleges that the public was not served sufficient notice of the vote to move students from MES for two reasons noted on the complaint. The first is the original agenda item for the discussion was identified as status update of Millville Elementary water issue rather than an action item. So she's saying that we could not or should not have taken action on that topic. Uh, the agenda was posted on July 24th, and that is more than 48 hours in advance of our July 27th meeting. On July 26th, however, the water operator had quit, and it became clear that since Millville had taken no action to bring MES water into compliance with DEP requirements, that it was unlikely to do so prior to the start of school. Therefore, on July 27th, the district updated our agenda to make MES water issue an action item instead of a discussion item. That agenda was distributed in the typical course, which is email to all of our town clerks, all the boards, and that email was sent at 2.39 p.m. on July 27th with the updated agenda, which we do have the right to do if items of unforeseen um, come up and, and we know we're going to have to talk differently about it. Um, also, Jennifer attended our meeting on on the 27th and um, was aware that we were discussing and voting that issue. Um, second, the complaint alleges that we, the school committee, misled the Board of Selectmen and Millville community by suggesting a vote on a potential MES move would not be held until, October, uh, until August 14th. Um, that is inaccurate. Dr. DeFalco sent a letter to the school community on July 11th, which is the email referenced in the complaint. In that email, Dr. DeFalco states that he hoped the work on the MAS system would be complete or very near completion by August 14th, and if not, the district would need to move students and staff out of MES for the upcoming school year. So again, that email was sent July 11th, saying we were hoping the work would be done or near completion, not that we would be making a decision. Um, in that same email, Dr. DeFalco clearly states that the school committee would be would hold a July 27th meeting to discuss the progress um, on resolving the water issue and to discuss next steps for the upcoming school year if needed. Therefore, the public was given ample notice of the meeting such that they could have attended if they wanted input heard on July 27th. The email reference of August 14th deadline for completion of the repairs, the email does not state that a decision would be made prior or on August 14th. So as discussed above, July 27th, MES had taken no steps, I'm sorry, Millville Board of Selectmen had taken no steps to resolve the issue and its water operator had quit on July 26th. It was very clear that the project would not be completed or substantially complete by August 14th. So the school committee did decide to <coughs> vote on, at that time in efforts to let our administration, our teachers, and our community know where they were, their children were going to be for the first day of school. I have had numerous conversations with Jennifer. Dr. DeFalco has had numerous conversations and emails with Jennifer, town administrator, throughout the summer. And we were all on the same page up until that 20, the July 27th meeting. We all knew what was happening. We knew the operator had quit. And we knew 
what we need what work needed to be done and Jennifer you attended our meeting on the 27th and agreed with us and told us that it was not an easy task I recognized you for that for your time and energy at the July 27th meeting so finally the complaint asks for the resolution of the July 27th vote to be void and sub subsequent ac actions to be reversed meaning we move students back to MES before the start of the school year. As I stated, I do not believe there was an open meeting law violation, but even if there was one, it was a technical paperwork statement and there was no harm intended. The Board of Selectmen and Community were, were on notice of the meeting and discussion of the water issue at July 27th meeting, which is why you attended our meeting. Therefore, I don't think there's any remedial action needed. Um, but we can certainly discuss this now that it's on our agenda mm. and we're sitting in a public meeting. <clears throat> Madam, Madam Chair, uh, mm -hmm. just as a point of order, uh, Jennifer Gill is entitled to address this board, seeing that she's on the agenda. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I just... Dan is saying that Jennifer can sit because she, she is the one that filed it on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, yeah, so if you'd my, like to sit... Uh, my point is, Ms. Gill, uh, Chairwoman Gill is on the agenda, and arguably now the, the Board of Selectmen in Millville is on the agenda now because this was just brought up in that manner. So, out of fairness... Um, for the process, I just wanted to make that clear, uh, because, and you have addressed her um, directly from that your seat. So, okay. just out of fairness, I want to make sure that the board of selectmen Millville, if they have an open meeting right now going on, now is um, um, allowed to speak on their own behalf because they were brought up in, in particular the, the chairwoman. So, I just wanted to make that that clear. Thank you, Matt. Would Madam you like to join us at the table? So is everyone um, understanding on the email that I forwarded you about <coughs> the open meeting law complaint that was received to us by email? Um, so I obviously also forwarded it to our attorney and her recommendation is actually um, that we vote to conclude no remedial action is required in response to the open meeting law complaint and that we vote to delegate the superintendent dr defalco uh, working with legal counsel to respond to the complaint and file the answer to the attorney general on our behalf um, by september 13th so <coughs> madam madam chair i may um i just want to address um before we do that um not only did we receive a, a um, open meeting law complaint <clears throat> uh, by, the, by the chairwoman of the Board of Selectmen on behalf of the Board of Selectmen in Millville, um, we also received a, a legal response, or I'll try to be kind with this, is that came along with a, um, a half-hearted threat to the <clears throat> Blackstone Millville Regional school committee as well as a uh, uh, the superintendent and any and, and as to have the committee uh, claiming that the committee has made defamatory and damaging statements I, I just like to address these things if I may have a few minutes madam chair um, the attorney in his correspondence to the school committee stated that <clears throat> the board of select uh, sorry the uh, school committee created a blatant violation of the open meeting law um, we publicly posted 48 hours in advance um, on on uh, July 27th, um, and 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 part of the uh, claim is is that um, we didn't we didn't give notice. The requirement is to give 48 hours notice. Under the law, we can any agenda item. I understand the school committee has action required or. Um, information only that's guidance for school committee member any member on this committee any member on the board of selectmen on any town um, can make a motion on any uh, agenda item 
Matter of fact, on the 27th, Madam Chair, I was making a motion, and then I was, you, you stopped me in the middle of the motion to, to continue the, the discussion, and then I followed up maybe a half hour later with the motion. Um, so there's no violation of open meeting law. As a matter of fact, on November 10th, when we were discussing this, um, I, I- July 10th. Sorry, July 10th. Getting ahead of myself here. Uh, on uh, July 10th, um, I asked, the superintendent, if there was a plan that would be ready by July 27th, and the superintendent stated we're working on it, uh, to be ready in case we needed to make that decision then, because I don't think August 14th would have been fair notice to the parents just two weeks before the school opened. That's on uh, video. So, uh, but we are not required, um, uh, you know, to. To invite everybody to the meeting, our requirement is to post, a simple requirement in an open meeting is to post 48 hours in advance the time, the place, and the date of the meeting. Um, anything on the agenda can be, can be voted on. Um, so, uh, and so, so in the, in the public, um, in the complaint of the open meeting law violation, the public wasn't served proper, proper notice. That's incorrect. The public was served proper notice. Uh, uh, the complainant states that the status, is very, the status update is very different than taking a vote. Well, uh, we have, and I believe the Board of Selectmen of Millville, and I know the Board of Selectmen of Blackstone, um, issue items that were not uh, anticipated 48 hours before, many of those items are voted on by this board and by other boards. So, um, as well as um, this, what you, you listed, Madam Chair, was the mitigating factors that created that vote that night, the water operator, that we don't have to give an explanation of any of that. We did not violate the open meeting law. We, had, we were well within our rights to do what we did. And, and, um, and, and the fact that a, a decision, again, was supposed to be made on 8-14, we discussed on 710 that we wanted the information uh, prepared the, be, to be prepared to just in case we needed to make that that vote on the 20, uh, earlier to give the parents notice. See, we, we're charged with the safety and well-being of the students. We are not charged with providing clean, safe drinking water. We are charged with making sure that who's responsible for doing that does that or we remove the students until that is done. That's our, that's what we're charged with. I think we are willing, still willing to work as a body with the town of Millville to uh, get a resolution to this. I will also point out at the end of the July 27th meeting, the chairwoman stated that she was relieved because it gave her a year to resolve the issue. And, and my final issue is, well not my final issue, but for now, the. Uh, the defamatory and damaging statements in print at public meetings. We have created um, concerns and fears. Meritless, the, the, the attorney says that we have created meritless concerns and fears for both towns that could result in potential uh, Millville, claim, uh, Millville to claims. We simply repeated what the water operator told us, the water, water operator who was hired by the town of Millville, we repeated his information as he presented it to us. So uh, I, I, I think that's a, a far reach um, and, and it's unfortunate. And finally, finally, there is no open meeting law violation on the school committee. But the open meeting law complaint that we received from the chairwoman of the Board of Selectmen in Millville is made on behalf of an organization. That organization is the Board of Selectmen in Millville. I could not find, and maybe it's me, any vote taken by the Board of Selectmen in Millville authorizing the chairwoman to file an open meeting law complaint on the board's behalf. If that is the case, then this actual complaint is a violation of the open meeting law. Thank you, Mrs. Sh Madam Chair. I'll also make a motion to uh, allow Jason to uh, consult legal counsel for a response for the town of Millville. I'll second. So that will 
uh, motion will be to delegate the superintendent, Dr. DeFalco, working with legal counsel to respond to the complaint and file with the attorney general by September 13, <coughs> 2023. The motion made by Dan and second by Chuck. Uh, one Any more other discussion? One more thing for discussion, if I may. Uh, 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 the, the chairwoman earlier stated that she would welcome input and reach out from anyone on this committee. And I offered you my cell phone number the last on, on the 27th, mm -hmm. and the offer still stands. I will. I love this district. I love the students in the district, the families in the district. I'll do whatever I can to help out in any way. But as a representative, also in my other capacity as the town of Blackstone, I will not let. I will not stand by and let the taxpayers of Blackstone be subject. But I will be more than happy to work with you in any capacity, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other comments or questions? Okay, so all those in favor to delegate the superintendent, Dr. DeFalco, working with legal counsel to respond to the complaint and file with the Attorney General Office by September 13th, 2023. Say aye. 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 Actually, I have to take a roll call. So Ted? Yes. Kerry? Yes. Dan? Yes. Myself is yes. Tara? Yes. Tara? Yes. S and Chuck? Yes. Matt? Yes. So that is unanimous. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to, I didn't want to do it in front, of, in front of the motion, but Jennifer, I'm going to add that what you just asked for communication and that I have done nothing but communicate with you. I had done nothing but every single time I reached out to you said, please let me know how I can help. I want to help. I've offered to help with this water issue. I've offered to help with the DEP grant that is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I have also offered. And the only communication I consistently received from you, um, which started after our July 27th meeting, so July 28th, you reached out to me and you were so angry over Jason's email to the community that stated a fact from your selectmen's meeting on July 24th, in the last five minutes, Peter says, <coughs> he, you may not need to provide school with the water. And that he was going to double check with Mary Jude. He said it three days before our meeting. The day before our meeting, the water operator quit. Everything that Jason said as a statement at our July 27th meeting and emailed to our community, our, our school community on July 28th, were all facts. And you, you, you communicated to me the next day and that is all you were seeing. You were, you were not even, the night you were here, you were like, this is a big task. It, you, you, you took ownership of all of it. And the next day, all you could focus on was that one statement and you said nothing like kicking us when we're already down that's what you said to me you wrote it in an email mm -hmm. <clears throat> since that day all you have done is gone against this committee's decision and tried to paint a different picture in our community you ha i i really hope that you there's corrective action plan movement because that is what we were waiting for on July 27th. It would have been what we were waiting for on August 14th. It is August 31st. Your corrective action plan that you posted on June 13th, accepted by Mass CEP, is still on Mil Town of Millville website. And it is a changeover from chlorine to promanganate. And I have heard nothing. I've heard a four hour slideshow from Dr. Gulick talking about he's going to manage the chlorine and how great he is at doing it. That is not what is approved by Mass DEP right now. I, we, wouldn't, we would still be arguing over who's paying for the water. That's not what we'd be talking about today. Sorry, and you know very well that you and I started having conversations in January about who's paying for water, who's paying for the, the water system. It has been a town of Millville responsibility since forever. The building opened in 1992. I don't have that far back of history. So, sorry, I'm, continue. I'm, I am just, 
as a taxpayer and a school committee chair, I am very disappointed. Now, I sat here on J July 27th and thanked you. And now today, I am disappointed that since July 27th, because you were so angry about a factual statement that your town administrator made, it was not made up by Dr. DeFalco, that you have just plastered everything else over social media except for the real work. And I, I even said it to you when you text me this weekend. I said, when you want to talk about the real problems, let me know. I'm waiting. Okay. I just didn't want to interrupt. So I agree that the town administrator did question that gee, I don't know if we really need to do this, but the town administrator doesn't make the votes and the motions. The board of selectmen did. And the board, I knew that the board of selectmen would provide water. And that was kind of like, Ooh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Peter doesn't make those decisions. Peter executes the motions and things from the town. And we voted 5-0 on, on August 14th because you said, Jen, can you put a vote on this? And I said, absolutely, I will. Mm -hmm. And so and we voted is, on And I will, I'm going to publicly say right now that the water is ordered uh, for the Millville building. I appreciate what you're saying, but your entire board has been led by Peter's direction not to pay the water bills. That is why you don't have July's water test. Nobody has paid that. Millville, Town of Millville has the line item in their town meeting budget from MES water operations. He has, I've watched the meetings. He has told them, I don't think you need to pay it. As a taxpayer, you, we, we already voted to spend the money on MES water operations. Why wasn't it said in your August 14th meeting that you, the reason you don't have July test results is because the bill hasn't been paid because Peter's advising your board. You can say he doesn't make the decisions. He's advising your board not to pay the bills. It's hard to watch when you know all the facts. The conversations I've had with MassDEP, with, with you, we know a lot. The community knows what you've shared. Mm -hmm. They know what you've shared. They, don't, they, they know if they've watched a four-hour meeting, they, don't, they either know or they don't know. May 16th, we had a joint meeting with MassDEP. Mm -hmm. She told all of you, and you were all here, you are on notice. If they didn't watch that meeting, they don't know that. It's hard to know more than others because I also know that means that what is supposed to be done isn't being done. So there'll be a water update on Monday, September 5th, from our water operator. And I think that will answer some of your questions. Um, and uh, Dan, you mentioned things that our water operator said, repeating things. So. I don't know what you're specifically referring to. I can only go by my conversations with MassDEP, and I know that all of you have had, which the students didn't need to be moved from the building. We can provide bottled we water. We made that decision. Yeah. We don't need to be, MassDEP would probably never come to us and close a the building. They would probably go through the Board of Health. They would, if there was no potable water, it would, I, I actually wonder if the question was asked to Mary Jude, would you ever deem a building closed. No. She's saying no. she's they never said that it needs to be. I don't know that authority. that's their jurisdiction, but it is ours. And, and we decided as the regional school committee that it was not in the best interest of our students to be there two days ago. That was our decision. What you're not noting on public notice, you're talking about regional agreement. If we're going to reorganize the district, there is a process. We made a move as an emergency move, temporary. There is no, there, it's not written out in that regional agreement for a temporary move. We, we knew that that was not going to be where the students would thrive this school year. They already finished last year, honestly, before we put the bulk water in without being able to wash their hands. Families were told to bring in wipes I don't know and why you would cooking. do that. It's safe to wash your hands with. I mean, Mary Jo says that all the time. That's what Mass DEP says all the time. <clears throat> so I don't know who's advising you of this science. Like we're listening to Mass DEP and those experts 
who own water drinking water. I don't know who's advising all of you with these things that so you have no know. problem with your water. Is no. that what you're telling us? Are we we like at my house? Food? No, with the school water, oh. Mofil, there's no problem. Why did we move the kids out? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that the water, so we're working on the compliance issue, but until we do that, there is a temporary solution that uh, Mass DEP gives us, which is to provide bottled water. Which and you voted on on August 14th. Yeah. Well, I stated several times on, August, on July 27th that we would provide bottled water. You but Nobody then the TA was wasn't on board exactly. So an exact answer to the bottled water was given on August 14th. After they were mandated by the DEP yes. to do so. So she, she actually told us that clear. before. That's, she told us that at the July 20th. I knew that before, at the July 27th <coughs> meeting, which is what I said. Mass DEP told us we need to provide bottled water. If you think I'm going to make an enemy on a Mass DEP at this point, like I'm absolutely not. So on July 27th, Mass DEP told you they had to provide. No, before, I don't remember. July 25th. July 20 something, but they, the board didn't vote on it until August 14th. August 14th. August 14th. Yeah. That's where our Understand. next meeting was. I just have to add this point in. It's, it's Peter doesn't make the decisions, you said. The Board of Selectmen does. That's correct. The Board of Select. Peter is at the direction yes. of the Board of Selectmen in, in Millville, like the town administrator is in Blackstone. At the direction. And so after you guys vote to provide bottled water, the town administrator is disagreeing with Mary Jude at the DEP. He says, I disagree with this that's assessment. And the water consultant disagreed as well. So that's really none of our business as a school yeah. committee. Uh, our, our job is, and, and by the way, the DEP doesn't have the authority uh, to tell kids they gotta be out of that building. It, it would then, if the, if, it gets, if the town is not provide, or the landlord is not providing clean, safe drinking water, without a, a plan, which was the plan would then be to provide bottled water or potable water, then it becomes a Board of Health issue. I don't know how many times the Millville Board of Health has visited or checked, or is there any record of that? But um, so, so, but the D, that's not, so to, to say that the DEP said the kids don't have to leave, that's not their jurisdiction to say the kids have, they have absolutely no jurisdiction, not, no other way, the, the DEP would not want that jurisdiction on any, any school building. That's why we have local boards of health. And like when, when there's a boiling water, boil water order in Blackstone or whatever, the DEP notifies the local board of health. The local <coughs> board of health then takes action. Uh, so the DEP would never shut down a school, unless it was like a toxic dump site that it was built on where the land was contaminated. But uh, that water issue would be, it would go down a chain of, so to state that the DEP you know, didn't order that. Yes, it's an easy claim to make. They don't have the authority to order to order that, and the people should know that. The DEP does not have that authority. So um, it would be the local, you know, they gave you a mandate, and now you agreed to that mandate, although your town administrator disagrees with it. Um, and so if that mandate isn't followed, then the, the Board of Health, I would imagine, gets notified, and then, but we don't have, we don't, we don't need to care about any of that. We, we just need to provide a safe, environment for the students, um, where, which includes, you know, you know, the number one basic function other than air would be water for, for, the, for, the, for the students and the faculty in the building. So to, to continue to say that the DEP did not order the students to live, to leave the district, uh, the, the building, is an easy claim to make because it's false claim. They don't have the authority to make that, that call. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So I guess the only thing I would add is that this issue, not that I'm particularly proud of it, and I, well, I joined the board of selection in 2020, but the water has been in the state since 2016. So if it was problematic at this level, why not move the students in 16, <coughs> 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, or 22? Because the water is exactly the same. Because there was no corrective action plan that needed to be implemented on timeline by Mass DEP until this spring. And you had submitted it as of June, June 13th. It was an updated version of the corrective action plan. We asked you specifically if it could be done by the opening of school from our May 16th meeting forward. And the answer was yes. No, I would never have said yes to that. Absolutely not. I said that's a, the goal. I'm sure that's what I said. That's the goal. I would never have committed to a date like that because this has been at that meeting also discussed. This has been not going on for 20 I years. I said by the beginning of school back in May. When you had a water operator, Mass DEP was here, Mike Soder was here. Yep. Goal. 
For sure. We knew what the corrective action plan was, and and it was discussed to be completed by opening of school. We purchased bulk water to get us through the end of the school year. Yes. On May 16th. Mm -hmm. The plan was to have the new corrective action plan implemented and running in the school before the first day. We moved summer school out for that so they could have full access. And you were going to be moving forward with the $25,000 that you allocated to research the grant that was introduced to you by Mary Jude. Yes. That all was a conversation May 16th. Yes. So that is what is very different. That is very different. So if you're asking my opinion from, from what's different from 2016, that is very different. We had too many, we've never brought in bulk water before until February. That was never done because of the water quality until it could get, the filters could be changed. And so February on, it was very different. Does that answer your question? I what disagree, is but no. It doesn't? Yeah, I disagree, because it was like this the same issue. We had so. never brought in bulk water before, and there was not a But does that change plan. the quality of the water? May I ask what triggered, what triggered back in February I, bulk water? Was there Brown boiling water, water it was issue? The color. <laughs> yeah. There were a few many things. There the, were a few uh, things that, that happened in February. Part of it was the fact that we had failed yet another test Water. and we could not keep going back to parents with the same information and doing the same thing over and over and over again getting the same results we had a meeting in the water operator room it was myself bob from mass dep rich uh, was representing peter uh, bob ferrari sean murphy scott and myself i remember it like it was yesterday and i said we need a plan we're coming up on february break what can we do we cannot keep doing this. We all agreed bulk water would be something that would be important to send a message to the community that we could do different and provide a better quality of water to students while we came up with our game plan, which at the time was done in phases. The first phase was to change the, the green sand filtration system, which was done. And this was agreed by Dr. Gulick, who was representing Millville. And a few times in your meeting, I've heard Peter say, I didn't authorize this. He sent Dr. Gulick there that day to, do, to be there for him. And I've heard it said a few times by Peter, I didn't authorize this. I wasn't part of this. It you're paying Dr. Gulick, you were paying Dr. Gulick, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, about $10,000 a year to be a consultant, a lay person to Peter to explain the water from the Millville operator to your town administrator, who should then be bringing it back to all of you, mm -hmm. right? So he was there, and I believe it's been insinuated that the decisions were made by our superintendent. It was Dr. Gulick, for the, for the reference. And I said so. to everybody in that conversation, who of you in this room has children in this building? Nobody said a word. And I said very candidly and pointedly, if you had children here, you would be behaving differently. These children don't mean any less because they're not yours. Fix the water. So we came up with a plan. We all agreed on the plan. Then we got stuck with the $4,500 bill for the bulk water because suddenly the town administrator didn't ever confer with us on the water and never that agreed to pay cool. for it. Your water consultant didn't remember agreeing to that either in that, in that conversation. So we just paid it because we knew this issue would come up again. And we needed to make sure that we had the individuals that could provide the bulk water because there was no way we could move children at that stage in the school year to another building. It would have been so disruptive. And I'm glad we did because we did at the May 16th or May 15th meeting to, and, and I wanna highlight something that I think everybody is missing or forgetting. Mary Jude, and I'm going to quote her because she's on film. You can go back and watch the meeting. She said that you can't drink the water and you shouldn't cook with it because it gets absorbed into pastas yep. and rice. She said it, it's yes. on the meeting. I'm living in that space. So if anyone asks, why did you move the kids? It's for that reason. I cannot have children in a building anymore where we can't drink and cook with the water. I don't know why we're even arguing this. 
Facts. And all the posts and the this and the that, nice. just fix the water, please. Implement the corrective action plan. I want to get children back in that building next school year. If you looked at our redesign plans and our reconfiguration plans, Millville was always open. That was our primary grade school. It's a beautiful building. We need children there. I shouldn't be there. <coughs> the children should be. But they can't be if we can't cook and drink the water. And you can't. You said the other day on your post that you can. And that Mass DEP never said. The last time they told you that you could drink that water was August of 19. So I don't know where you're getting that information from, unless there's something new that we don't know about. We're not the enemy. We need to work together and fix this so that we can get the children back in the building next school year. And up until July 27th, we thought we were working together. And, and since the 28th, when you contacted me, you have not been working with us. You've been working against us. You have been purposefully putting out posts against us, purposefully sending legal notification to us, telling us to cease and assist talking about Millville. We haven't said anything. And nothing has, <gasps> nothing, and your, it, it's your post. Talked about it once. It's your post. <laughs> so exactly how you feel is how we feel, that you've been attacking us. We haven't said anything, Jennifer. We literally haven't responded to one thing that you, I have not said a word in response, and neither has the chair. We've been trying to help. I don't know if that's true of everybody. Jennifer. What's, why can't nothing you direct you your focus? Out. If people have problems. commented, it, succumb to your post and commented, that's very different than us spreading untruth, fa untruth facts. What have I said that's untrue? What do you we want, just what, want you to direct you your energy and Jesus? efforts towards the water problem in Millville. The solution, and, and yeah. that's the... <laughs> so I've personally been at the school three times myself with the water operator um, in the last week to work on the system. Great. Let us know when it's all set. So we'll have more of an update on Monday. Um, Can I, I ask, have yeah. any steps on the corrective action plan been taken? I know you're saying an update will come on Monday, but have steps on that plan been taken? So I don't want to misspeak on that because I think there is a lot of misinformation about the water, so I prefer to wait for the update on Tuesday. And from that will come from the water operator and will be precise. Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, the question you asked it since 2016 the water's been the same and and why now and um the fact that we had a, a meeting the superintendent had a meeting with the water operator and 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 the former water operator the consultant and ever and and so the district brought in the portable water that the town's uh refusing um to reimburse the district on is that alone is uh enough reason uh for me to uh, the fact that you are failing to provide clean, safe drinking water and then continue to double down on saying that uh, uh, that the water is safe to drink. And, and the, fact that, you, the fact that you can't we answer the it. simple question that, <coughs> that committee member Gordette just asked is, did you file a corrective action plan with the DEP or not? It's public information. So uh, I, It's public information. Why don't we wait for the water operator? So like, you're I, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. And you don't know if you filed a corrective action plan with the DEP or not. And you're coming to the school committee uh, to discuss water uh, with us and whatever your agenda was. Um, and so you can't, it's a public information. Uh, it, I could get on the DEP, I'll call the DEP tomorrow and find out if you, if you've, um, if you filed with them. I don't understand um how difficult that question is uh, actually i inquired last week and i was told that the last uh, filed corrective action plan is posted on millville's website oh. by mass dp that was the answer i said okay june 13th and she said no may but the one on your website is june 13th so well i don't know i, I and that would be the last one we talked about which is promanganate I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. Uh, the, the, the Millville Board of Selectmen right now with the, with the school has a unique opportunity to fix a problem that's probably been going on for 20 to 25 years. You are in a, 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 a position, a difficult position, but you have a golden opportunity and your other fellow board members uh, uh, to, to, to rectify. And I, I, I can't speak for all the members, but I think the entire school committee it would, would do whatever they can to help get this rectified. And because I don't think any of us like to see that building. I just unoccupied. keep going back to May 16th when Mary Jude 
gave a solution in money. Like she, she's basically saying, I'm going to put Millville on the top of the list. It, like promote that in the town. Let them know that you're working towards it instead of trying to knock down the school committee and, and the superintendent. When we are in the business of educating the kids in a, in a safe facility. And that's what we're doing. Can I just add one final thought? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it feels to me, and I go, feelings aren't facts, but it feels to me that the guidance and advice that you are all getting is not good. And it's, and it's leading to this tension that shouldn't be here. And at the end of the day, when those individuals who are giving you this guidance are gone, you're all, we're, you're all still here trying to work together to make sure that we have the school system that is the best for the kids in both communities. And I just need to say that because I feel strongly that the strategy that's been used isn't the right strategy. What I sent out in writing to our community was exactly word for word what I read that night at the school committee meeting. There's not a word different. I know, and I, that's why I got up at the meeting to say we said we'd provide bottled water and corrected that. And then when the, there was a second point, like we haven't done any work, so that's not true. Now, I didn't push back so hard on that one because like, you can't argue with the results. Like on July 27th, there was a whole lot of movement. Like I had met with Mary G. Pigsley and many others like at the meeting we had on July, it was after the 10th, I can't remember the 11th or 12th. I was like, I'd give you my kidney right now if it would fix this. Like we're trying so hard to get this done and it's just not moving the way we want it to move. And I don't know how to make it move that way. I'd say since we've had personnel changes, things move really well. I'm quite pleased. I don't want to give too much update. Dr. Gillick wants to make sure he, we say things specific because there's so much um, misinformation and different things being said. So I want to save that for September 5th. I know that makes all of you uncomfortable. I would say that I treat Dr. Gillick. Honestly, similar. it doesn't make me that uncomfortable because our kids aren't there. And, and I hate to say that, but it, I, it, is, it is your job Yeah. No. to, to work on that where yeah like it's our responsibility right with the board of selectmen everything ends with us right um that's why i came that night and apologized that there was a whole lot of progress despite a lot of effort a lot of effort um and i still think for the other thing that mary you mentioned there's grant money for this so we have had discussions with the chair of the board of selectmen blackstone and went okay <laughs> We have had discussions with Uxbridge as well for a long-term solution that's been going very well. So that is moving. Um, more pressing issues have taken our time and attention away from that and away from other projects in Millville as well. Um, this has been our primary work since May 16th, I'd say. Um, but that I did find that email misleading and hurtful. Um, I think like if you look in social media, parents are panicked. They think, oh my God, if my kid goes to school, they're gonna die. That's not what's gonna happen because I, we're I providing them. I didn't see any of that. Where do you see that? I didn't see any of that. I haven't heard anything. Where do you I see saw, that? I, 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 there there were, so, okay, anything. sorry, I was being, sorry. I have to remember, I mean, be careful. Um, that something bad is gonna happen to their child because of this water. They can't wash but their hands of it. They can't kids, do this. Jen. We have, we have staff that have been, in, been employed there for yeah, so 20 Sorry, it's not like I don't years. care about the staff either. I care about them too. Um, but we're providing bottled water for cooking and drinking. And I think the frustrating part was the, I'm just really tired of fighting with Peter. Yeah. And it was just, it was exhausting all spring fighting over bills that was be, they were being, just wouldn't pay. And then I have to come back to my board and say, sorry folks, we have to pay this. It's so exhausting. do you know if those bills so. are paid now, by the way? I don't. About the chair. Nope. Okay. And do you, um, do you I know how they much? are not, I believe they are not paid. Um, and that would be to the prior water operator. Yep. And do you, did you have a motion for, to file the open meeting law uh, violation against us? It was discussed when we had that meeting. When did your committee vote to file the open meeting law complaint? So I us? said I was gonna file it and Peter spoke with everyone individually. That, that that's consent. a violation of open meeting law right there. 
Yeah. So, the fact that you just admitted that is a violation. I'm not going to lie to you. So I'm not going to file a complaint. I, I, but, I, I have it. I have one filled out, and I'm not gonna because that'll never but, end. You know, I just want the, by the way, work to focus on the right. real work. So, yeah, you made your point. You were very upset on July 28th about a statement that was made that was a fact, and you have gone full force with that. And I again, I praise you for your work, for your communication, and and tonight I don't feel the same way. I'm just making a public statement about it because you have you have caused a lot of turbulence in our community since July 28th because you were angry over that statement. And I know that. I know why you did it. I know why there was a four hour meeting and I know why you've had slide shows that have gone up and come down and you've mentioned my name and, and not mentioned my name. And I'm here to say that I still stand by what Dr. DeFalco said that night. I've watched that meeting too many times, 35 minute meeting, July 24th, the last five minutes, that is what Peter said. And it wasn't you, I never said it was you. But he represents you and he advises you. And, and had That's you gotten different advice, I think, we'd be in a different the place. Community. I think we'd be in a different place. Uh, um, That's misleading so, the community to say that we would not provide bottled we water. But you didn't if anyone else watched August that meeting, 14. they would have heard that. <laughs> So yeah. now I'm actually, Madam, I need Madam to move Madam Chair, the start Chair, of school. Uh, can I wish, how much bottled water has been provided to the schools to date as of today? So the... Uh, I'm talking about actual <clears throat> bottles, if we're actually getting bottled water, or gallons or dollar amount, what is it? Two gallons. Yeah, so, uh, so I saw our email today, it said two coolers are going to be delivered next week. Next week. Next week. And then bottled water, um, bottles to put in the refrigerator, um, and it'll be next week. And so our head of Board of Health said, if you want, I will go and buy water and deliver it to you today if you need it. And that was declined. So it sounds like we did Millville a favor by moving the children out of there so that it you can limit the amount of water that needs to be delivered to that school. Because a refrigerator full of water, bottled water, is not going to cut it for how many children? Hmm. About 400. So. And that's going that back that. to a problem that's existed for years now. That is the first time Millville has actually paid for water going to MES. It's always been. So your motion was made August 14th. Yep. I reached out last week, and immediately they put an, a plan into action. That's not the first time we provided. We provided bulk water on May 15th. That's to get through the rest of the school year. On June 20th, you made a motion at your meeting, which was not on your agenda, to reiterate that you were going to reimburse us for the purchase of water. Yes. That's not providing water, Jennifer. That's not doing it. You, and you said to me on June 20th, when I sat at your table, um, I said, you're doing this to set a precedence? That, and you said, yes. A precedence that we bought water. Just so you remember that right, clearly. Fine. But have and you given us bills for that yet so we can reimburse you? Because I don't yes. think we have. Yeah. Have you? OK, thank you. Thank you. And to note, MassDEP wouldn't let me order it when I tried to order it in May, yeah, it had, had to come to through back. the town because they said this is not your responsibility. You should not be involved. We cannot take this order from you. And, it, and the truck sat outside. And it sat out, and we almost had to dump it. Until the order was replaced by the town of Millville. The, 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 water, the water almost had to be dumped because it couldn't sit right. longer than it. And these are the, this is the frustration that like we are in the business of educating the children. This is not stuff that we should be spending an hour on in the middle of our school <clears throat> meeting. Um, so I need a motion now to conclude that there's no remedial action required in response to the open meeting law complaint that was filed by Jennifer Gill on behalf of Mobile Board of Selectmen. So um, moved. Motion made by Karen. Second for discussion. And second by Dan. Okay, so this is on the open meeting law complaint. Um, this, <clears throat> this, um, vote that there'll no no remedial action be taken. This will be prepared by, I would imagine, this response will be prepared through the superintendent, through the town, uh, the legal school's council, legal, legal council. council. Legal council. We, is it re, is it required for us to vote uh, that there'll be no action taken, or yes. is that going to be the? It is a requirement. And, okay. And we already voted for legal council to prepare the statement. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Any other discussion on the open meeting law violation? Okay. Uh, we'll take a roll call for this. So, Ted? Yes. OK. 
Perry? Yes. Dan? Yes. Aaron, yes. Tara? Yes. Tara, S. yes. 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 Uh, so that's unanimous. Um, and we will have that. Uh, Jason will work with legal counsel to respond to the attorney general and forward it to me so I can reply to the complaint. That's the way the motion was written. Yes. Take care of it. <clears throat> Madam Chair, if I can just touch on one thing that uh, Chairman, um, Chairwoman Gill stated that she has reached out to Blackstone. That, so as a member of the Board of Selectmen, we haven't gotten any update on that, but I, I want to make it clear that Blackstone is going to be engaging next year at a, for another well for their own town water needs. And we did discuss with Senator Mike, uh, Representative Soda a few years ago, um, running on a pipeline up Lincoln to, to the Millville Elementary School, and the estimated ballpark through permitting and, and everything else was anywhere from uh, seven to ten years at about seven to ten million dollars for that process to well I I hear what you're saying and I think in listening to all of the meetings and listening to Mary Jude I think it would be in Blackstone's best interest to engage in conversation with Millville about it because they are being offered a hundred percent grant for the cost new wells can be included that would be dug in Blackstone to provide town water to the townspeople and um, the school. Yes. So I do think it would be in the best interest in the town of Blackstone I, to entertain I, those conversations, but I, that's just my... Right. I didn't want to get into the discussion. I just wanted a point of information on that. Thank that, you. That. Thank you. So You're welcome. We met with um, Brian Chamberlain huh? and your town I know. Administrator. I'm aware. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, because you, I thought you said you weren't aware. We haven't. I, we haven't met as a board. Got, yes, uh, that's As a board. True. I'm, yes. I, I apologize if I misspoke. I'm aware of that, but the board hasn't, it hasn't been brought to the board. Okay. Uh, so next on school committee, we have MSBA update for school building committee, which we just met this evening again. And Tara, do you want to give a, a yeah. chair of the school building <laughs> committee an update on? Sure. So um, we are filing um, the steps um, over to MSBA as they come up and um, trying to work on ways to inform the community about the um, project, which includes um, the feasibil feasibility study, which is what needs to be voted on. So we're working on handouts to share at some community events. Um, and then we will also be posting on the district website as we get more information to include. And I don't know, Jason, do you have anything else? Uh, no, Jill, I think you hit all the points. So everything's been submitted that needs to at this point, and we're just um, working now on before the school committee will bring next at the next meeting some draft language to look at a motion, um, sorry, to look at a warrant article for the um, town meeting, uh, special town meeting that is being requested in the fall for a vote on the feasibility study. But other than that, we got it all. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we have business office. <laughs> I'm sorry. <Go> on. <laughs> I'm just saying your lifesaver. <laughs> um, um, first item is going to be the hiring of personnel and the updates inside your packets um, is an update. I just wanted to give you a, a quick summation. We've uh, brought on 21 new teachers, two new paraprofessionals, and one SP SLPA. Uh, due to resignations, retirements of um, all of the Unit C and the Unit A, the teachers. You want to have any questions on our personnel changes? Also behind that, um, if that's okay, Denise, the, your BMR SD personnel update current vacancies. Oh, um, I don't have it. My apologies. Oh, no, no, that's uh, fine. Yes, these are our current vacancies as of right now. We have a special ed teacher and we're working with that we have a finalist right now we have a paraprofessional that we're still accepting resumes for in the middle school we have a paraprofessional we are still accepting resumes anyone out there um, in the JFK we are we have an ABA paraprofessional that we're also accepting resumes and at the high school we have a technology teacher we're working with a finalist right now and then we have a paraprofessional where we're still accepting resumes there also so given where we were and where we are now, I mean, we're right down to the wire and we've done really well recruiting some, some great staff. Um, 
at orientations and everywhere. There's just a lot of excitement. And you saw that with all of our principals here as they discussed our meetings and, and the interactions that they've had. So I, I'm very happy with all of the teachers that we placed. And you did all the onboarding with all oh, of them? Oh, I did. I did it all personally. Um, I am now thoroughly aware of the process. No, not that I, I wasn't aware of the process, but um, by doing it personally, I, I, I'm speaking and saying, I, I love these guys. They're great hires. And I can attest to it because I spend time with them a lot of time. So. And we just hired this afternoon the special ed teacher for MES. So we have one tech teacher and we have four parents. Processes. Uh, next on the agenda item is the expenditure report. You have this expenditure report in front of you. Um, as we're looking through it, there are a couple of items that kind of stand out. Some of the items um, that are reflecting in here are some of our salaries. The salaries at this point, when we had done this, the grants hadn't come in, so the salaries were encumbered on here. So that's why some of those line items are still unadjusted. So as the grants are coming in, the salary and the encumbrances move off of here. So then it puts the, the numbers in into a more positive light on those salary lines. Does anyone have any questions regarding the expenditure report? Thank you for that wonderful presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Um, moving on to our facilities. Mr. Huber. Good evening. Okay, I'm um, sure you've all seen a new parking lot at the BMR track. Looks With beautiful. With the new signs up. And the signs. Great. Yeah, everything's done, ready to go. Um, they probably used it for the scrimmage game on uh, last Monday. Um, the broken pane of glass has been repaired at the auditorium. They had to do it in two sections due to the, the trophy case that was there, and that wasn't getting moved, so they did the pane in two pieces and seemed it really nice. You can't tell that there's a, a two-piece glass there. Um, we discovered a small leak in a pipe in the all-purpose room down in the basement. That pipe did have an asbestos elbow on it. We called in Universal Environmental Services and they came in and removed the asbestos. Now we just gotta get the plumber in there to fix it, but in order to do so, you gotta shut the water off to the building. So it's gonna have to be done on, he said he'll do it on a Saturday. I already spoke with him. We just got to find a Saturday when the building's not being used now because we've got sports going on. So uh, we'll get that straightened out. Uh, Millville Elementary, um, the water consultant is asking that we replace a hose bib on the outside so that they could use that to drain the water from the tank to simulate the usage of the water being used throughout the day on a normal school day. Uh, Aren't you? If I may ask a question on that one. What, what tank is this for? This is for the water storage tank. He went off outside of the building? Correct. You mean there? There was no drain on it. It's a big green the tank. The 5,000 gallon tank? It's 10,000. The, the big tower? Mm -hmm. off no, the not the big tower in the woods. No. That's the fire tower. It's a green tank that's closest to the building. It's fenced Behind in. the building by the door. That's the one we that. use to put the truck water in. And it's part of the filtration system. The water gets filtered, yeah, then we, goes we, into that green storage. They want thing. to be able to drain it from yeah. that's holding well water before it's treated, and they want to be able to drain it. No, that's treated water. It's treated water. Yep. This this tank is what the water goes in. Correct. The drinking water for the school. The Correct. water that supplies the building. Yes. They're, they're the water. It's their system. They yes. can they can put a they can put a faucet on it. Or whatever they want. We, we, I don't. I would question whether or not we have. Well, it's it's on. Yes, you're I'm right. I'm telling you right now. It's you're right. It's, it's on the building. It's, it's a regular it's, garden hose hookup on the building. I, it's like asking the school district to go to, the, to Elm Street and hook up a spigot on one of our tanks at our water filtration facility. That is their water filtration facility. I don't understand how they don't get this. That part of the school building. Is the, water, is the town of Millville's water filtration facility. We shouldn't be doing anything to that. 
Pouring it's like we're not wing on the inside. It's, it's like I don't care. We're not, a, we're, not, the we're not. We are not water operators. Are you a licensed water operator? I'm not sir. No, we have licensed water guys so in black. It's like a faucet store. in the kitchen. We're going to replace it. That's no, no, no. In no. This is plumbing. to the to the storage tank that supplies drinking water oh, to the building. Oh, it's a garden hose hookup attached to the building that they've been using to drain water out of the building. Out of the tank itself. Just moving the through water the through the pipes. Yes. Instead of laying it because just there is there, no drain open up on the, the faucet. Tank. On the Why do they line. need to drain the tank? I'm, I'm still <laughs> they, well, what there. they're trying to do is simulate the water usage in order to balance the chlorine in the water. But I agree. So they come in and they run faucets yes, throughout the day, Why, drain right. down yeah. the tank so that the well runs purpose. again to fill the tank back Someone's up. Someone's going to tell them. So no they with kids in the building, though, with with using the water. Correct. Right. So you don't waste as much chlorine. But they should be doing it kind of on summer operations since the building is. But we're but we're not here to tell them that, honestly. That's not it's our their tank. So fault. We, Scott, if they can ask a question. So what is wrong with the the faucet right now? The little brass fitting that you put the wrench on to open is getting all worn out. That's true. That's their, that's their faucet, isn't it? Why are we being asked to... As the landlord of the building? <coughs> right. Is this faucet part of the water filtration system? No. All right, replace the faucet then. I'm fine. Up, up to, uh, per the lease, up to so mm -hmm. many thousands yes. of dollars, we Correct. cover... The I, I apologize. I, I, I understood faucet, Scott to say it's part of the holding tank. Oh, no, they want to drain the tank the down by using the faucet attached to the building. Scott, how much is one of these things? Probably twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I just wanted to make sure we were tapping into a Put a ball a valve tank. on there. That's nice. It's probably going to be about two hundred and fifty. We're, we're, we're concerned. <laughs> hey, moving on, if that's okay. Um, the last bullet on the page um, should have gone on the Millville. We want to let the town of Millville or anybody else know that the building is still available for facilities use. They can absolutely fill out a facility request form. We will still provide somebody in the building. So athletics in the gym. Correct. Good. Okay. And doing water. I know some people like to breathe a sigh of relief. No, yeah. no. Yes. 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 BMYBL uses it every Saturday. Yeah. Our high school basketball teams use it for practice after school hours. So sometimes, yeah. We, I think we definitely so They just need to bring their own water. Bring your own water. Or, the, or dance companies have. come in, use the auditorium. Yes. Yeah. We just ask they bring their own water. Uh, okay. Fred Hotnet Middle School. Uh, Industrial Burner has completed the new chimney stack. Um, they replaced the, the rusted out sections. Took longer than expected because they brought a crane over and the crane broke down and but I was adamant that they got it done by the start of school because we could not have that disruption going on. So that's done. The spreading of the loom on the soccer field has proved to be more difficult than I thought with all the rain we've been getting. <laughs> the grass continues to grow. I gotta get the grass short enough so I can spread it and not, and the, Tractor is leaving ruts in the field, so I'm just defeating the purpose by trying to do that. So I had to take those uh, 20 yards of loom off the field and store them on the side for now until the ground gets a little more compact. But we'll get back on that. We were able to do it on the lower field at the high school um, field right down below the track because there really is no grass there if anybody's been up there. So <clears throat> we got that done. Uh, JFK, AFM, MES complex, uh, six rooms had real bad carpeting. I don't know if anybody has seen them, but they had tape all over them. They were all buckled. Um, so in order to, to remedy that problem, um, we hired a company to come in and make like large throw rugs. It's just like replacing the rug, but they binded the edges and laid them flat on top of the existing carpet. This way we didn't have to disturb the asbestos under it. And that was done. Looks nice. They look very nice. I yeah. saw them also. And they Safe, clean. They look good. Yeah. It really spruced up the rooms. Yeah. So. It really does. It does a big difference. Uh, we added 24 new parking spaces, um, and I think we added six more on the Menden Street side. But we can probably add more to the Menden Street side if we have to. Uh, Telestone did come in and say that the way the cars were parked on Monday, Tuesday, it wouldn't be an issue for the buses to pull in. 
so we can add more spots there. Uh, we relocated the no parking fire lane, which was on the other side of the driveway for whatever reason. Um, we now move that to the uh, curbside side, which is closest to the building. Uh, we did some work on the playground and we continue to do work on the playground. Uh, we removed two pieces of equipment that were deemed a liability to us. Um, it was in our best interest to remove them. They really didn't get used much anyways. Uh, they're more for bigger kids than the younger kids. So we did that over the weekend and we regraded all the P-stone, covered up any exposed concrete that was there. Uh, we built a new play area for the preschool and kindergarten. We did a 32 by 24 using uh, lumber, um, yellow pine lumber. Um, and we filled that with the process with chips and we moved all the preschool play equipment that was at Millville over to JFK, put it in there. Um, if anybody drove by Monday night during the ice cream social, it was beautiful to see all the kids out there playing in the park. Um, so yeah, I think that looks a lot better. And that's uh, all I have for tonight. Can I ask you? Okay. Um, were there additional, did the additional seating, the picnic tables come in for the high school? They have not arrived yet. Okay. They are on order. Do we have an ETA for that? I'm sorry, what? An yeah. estimated time of arrival? No, I don't have one. Sorry. You ordered six, I think. I think. Was it six? Six. Six. Swing yeah. shift. Uh, I did have a question on the walkway from the the new driveway on uh, Lincoln Street. The walkway to the is there a handrail or anything? I was so just we driving by it the other one. day and it looked like there might be uh, someone with a you know wheelchair right. access might have issues. Yeah, Denise and I discussed it. We're gonna okay. I'm gonna put in some uh, four by four posts. Um, I saved some piping from the old backstop that I took down on the girls softball field and I'm going to use that for railings. No oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, because right when you come off the track it's a little dangerous. Well, steep. Yeah. Excellent. It will Same be addressed. <laughs> <laughs> Are we pursuing a fence for the playground or no? Did we you? did meshing underneath so that so if you um, <clears throat> the guardrail is a double wide guardrail which is that. which is good. It's not a single rail and um, we ended up doing green meshing underneath the bottom okay. so the little ones can't slip underneath. They can't yeah, they can't crawl It would be very it. hard for them to get to over get a over double. It. Yeah. You I would see that. I thought I re remember trying to climb that one, and it wasn't easy. No, it's not. No, Even no, for no, an it's adult, wide. it's not easy. So, yeah. so we but did the meshing gets there, I'm the sure can't get underneath it. Yes, exactly. The adult, will be, the adult right. would be right behind them before yeah. they got over oh, the shop. I'm glad there was a fix But the under. Yeah, I was concerned they would crawl under it, so we put a green plastic fence yeah. no. you can't even see it it blends no, in with the grass in. it looks great no, I've driven by and I didn't even know yeah it's a it's yeah you have to really look it's there Thank so the little ones we gotta add some it. more we didn't you know we ran out we didn't go far enough down miscalculation all right so I think uh, any other questions that we have a facility request from the dance company to use the high school auditorium cafeteria and teachers cafeteria and the adults and that's for November 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Can they're I requesting a special <laughs> custodian. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> for all those days. Wow. Um, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion contingent <laughs> on Bob is of the dance company and Joe the custodian has to wear the pink tutu every one of these nights uh, in November. He is awesome, by the way. I agree. You've seen the fathers of the dance company, right? They go in the parade, they all wear the pink tutus. <laughs> I don't care about the man lift. We just want. To. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the request. It's another. Oh, okay. So wow. Tara has one to add. Oh. So I had a uh, the Girl Scout leader um, had sent a application for use of facilities. Um, Mrs. Stearman sent her an email back saying that Christina Schaefer approved it, but we didn't we didn't get it in our packet, and I know she's anxious to get the um, dates posted by to her her troops. So I didn't know. She sent me a copy of it if we want to entertain approving it as well. It's Wednesdays um, for the whole school year, basically, at the complex, either the CAF at the elementary um, JFK or AFM side. 
So but I told you know I replied to her saying you know the principal checks the dates and once it comes to us typically <clears throat> we'll approve scouts, but she did forward the email that said Christina did approve it. So. So the and and it was approved. So that means mm -hmm. the dates probably right. work for. Um, Madam Chair, I'll amend my motion. Well, one is paid. The dance company has yeah, a fee. Yeah, this is a free one. And the, um, so let's just amend it to accept the dance company for the dates and the fee amount requested. Uh, and the Girl way. Scouts are waived. <laughs> I'll make two motions then. We'll get, well, let's get the dance company done and then we'll do, okay. I'll do the. So motion to approve dance company for the dates listed and the fee of $620. Uh, sorry, $1,720 is multiple days. Second. Did I make that motion? No, you're good. I'll call for a vote. Who, who made the motion? Yeah, I made the motion. Yeah, oh, Dan yeah. made the motion. <laughs> Second by Carrie. Any uh, other questions or all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous, thank I'm you. I'm sure I make a motion. Tara makes the next motion on what she has on her phone. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the Girl Scout request for complex so motion made by Tara and second by Matt any discussion or comments? all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed that's unanimous <clears throat> and moving on we have committee forum I'm gonna go first <laughs> um, so obviously there was a lot of social media activity and I'm only going to talk about one part of that activity which was a drone being flown over Millville Elementary School um, and I want to make it publicly known that that request did come from myself um, I it's public record my emails back and forth um, with Mr. Buckley from August 2nd to the 5th um, started as one conversation because he is on our school building committee um, and he had sent us uh, some previous work with that he had and I replied to that email asking for a current photo of the Millville Elementary School ground um, that request did not come from the superintendent as was implied on social media so True to style, people only recognize the negative reputations of people. And I'm going to sit here tonight and point out the community service that Mr. Buckley has provided to our communities. He has lived in, he had lived in Millville his entire childhood and most of his adult life before moving to Blackstone. When he lived in Millville, he was a member of the fire department. He was... Um, the beginning of dispatch for fire and EMS in Millville. And he started his family in Millville. He was raised in Millville. Um, he has given back to this community for over 29 years as a school committee member between Millville and Blackstone. And again, true to form, people only go after the negative reputation. So I want to personally point out the work that he has done for our communities this is not the first time that he's been asked to take drone footage of any of our property and it will not be the last <coughs> he has done graduations for us most notably 2020 when people couldn't attend he had his his drone and he worked with other people to have the graduation recorded from above the car parade that the community loved recorded from above he has done drone footage for us that is highlighted on our honor roll every quarter from the high school it's a if you ever take the time to look at it it's an overview above our high school flying through <laughs> with all the students names um, i have been contacted via email there were many comments on facebook and i'm going to recognize the email right now and answer you because i'm not answering an email about someone else's reputation um, and i'm going to answer the question which is why is mike buckley Ha posting overhead shots of a, of a school building. Well, the truth is, is anyone can post overhead shots from Google Earth from anywhere. Um, <coughs> overhead shots of school buildings are already available on, so on, on Google Maps, Apple Maps. 
Life 360 has their own map. Uh, I think they get it from Apple Maps. But let's be honest, and the truth you're, you're saying it is because of the person that did it. And I just highlighted what I do know about him. And I'm, I'm making that as a public statement tonight. I asked, there are many things that Millville still doesn't want to talk about, and that is that there is a beaver dam impeding on the fields of our Millville Elementary School, impeding on the well. We have talked about the surface water. We've been told by Mass EP surface water is not contaminating the well. I'll go with that. But I want to show you the pictures we have, and I want to know what Millville's going to do when the swamp is now going to go on to the ball field or the playground that my family donated. And they're, they're, they're going to say, I have no right to ask about that, maybe. Or when it's impeding on the water storage tank of our fire suppression system, because that's how close it is. With the footage he got for us last week, he didn't rush up there and do it when I asked for it. It was probably about three weeks since our emails. And I, I would love Millville to address that. It's unfortunate that they left. I guess they didn't want to talk about the beavers. They've made it clear they don't want to talk about the beavers. But the truth is, Jennifer Gill just asked, what is different from 2016 to now? The beavers are new. We were told that we were first notified about them in 2020. If you look at Google Maps, I believe the overhead picture is from 2021 school year because our COVID tents are up. And the vast difference from that picture to what Mike got for us last week is disheartening and it is going to hit the field it is going to hit there's the kids aren't going to be able to play out there and that's a, a Millville Parks and Rec property town of Millville property that isn't school property we can't do anything about it except make it known because I don't think a lot of people in town know what's happening up there in fact, when I asked Mike to do it, he goes, oh, I'll wait till fall. I said, no, Mike, you don't have to wait till fall. It's, it's very hot. You, you, it used to be dense forest against that ball field. And now you can see through. The trees are dead. The marsh is coming. And, and it's, it's upsetting to see. that, And it's not being cared for. So that's my, uh, my public, my school committee forum. Anyone else have anything to share? Uh, I do. Um, on September 12th at Divine Mercy Parish, uh, the Cub Scouts will be having their bottle rocket um, registration event. So bring a two liter bottle. Uh, we have compressed air and we shoot rockets two, three, four hundred feet up in the air. Kids seem to love it last year, the year before. So, um, you know, you, you can just come and enjoy it uh, if you have little ones. And um, yeah, it should be a good time. Starts at 630 at uh, Divine Mercy Parish. And there won't be any beavers there. It's <laughs> good to know. Anyone else for a committee forum? I'm Madam Chair. I'll chime in then. I, sure. I kind of piggyback on uh, <clears throat> on what you were just speaking of. Um, um, believe it or not, I for those of you who don't know me, I also have a checkered uh, reputation and a no. hard dedicated. Uh, <laughs> Uh, record of public service to the to the to the to my community um and i'm kind of saying that to be a smart guy too but i'm i'm and believe it or not i have not always agreed with mr buckley on topics uh but with that being said um when i was on the board of selectmen i think it was back in 2019 and we expedited the lincoln street bridge right outside the um i actually reached out to mr buckley to fly the drone um, and give us progress um, on the and, and he complied. Cost I don't no, no charge no charge. I think it actually some of his, his, community. his drone shots. Let are, it be known that not many people do that anymore. Right, and his drone shots I believe are on our annual town report. Um, and so again, Mr. Buckley and I don't always see eye to eye, but actually an item like this has brought us. Um, we, we do have a uh, mutual um, interest, and in that is in in the district and and. And, um, and I'm grateful for that. Um, and I, I, I was not aware on how big that beaver pond was. And 
when I stopped by and looked at it today, I did. I thought I saw the beavers actually building a boat ramp now because it's big <laughs> enough. <so. laughs> I had to. I had to throw that in. And I also want to add that the Board of Health asked me that. I think the school may have gotten a notification on September 13th at three o'clock. Three o'clock at the library. There is. They got a. Uh, the Board of Health has a grant. They have knock hand kits and they're giving knock hand trainings. Um, so for anybody, anybody or any um, organization that's interested, and I did have a follow up to that, but I'm going to let that one go. Because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. We'll also mention that we are all fully quarried as school committee members. So. Oh, thank you for pointing that, that out. That was kind of my follow-up. Yeah, I know what you're, where you're going with that, but you have oh, to pass a quarry to sit here. And I, I by the way, I, um, just to be clear, I stand by whatever I said on social media, um, any of my comments on social media. So if that, if that comment earlier as was a Dan Keefe community member. I, yeah, I, as Dan Key, yes, I stand, I stand by myself. <laughs> Thank you. Any other committee forum items? I'm actually shocked we're done before nine o'clock. So, our next school committee meeting is September 14th at 6 p.m. here. We do not have executive session this evening, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Dan, second by Matt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.